two, one. What's happening, guys? This is Logan Robinson from NoelGameDay.com. We are here for episode three of Calculated Chaos with 2013 national champion Brian Stork. And we've got another national champion with us during the same year, Josue Matias. We've got a few other guests joining us also. Hopefully, fingers crossed, hopefully technical reasons and traffic reasons. Some people get invited to the Masters. We obviously did not get the invite, but <laughs> so looking forward to hopefully having James Wilder Jr., former Florida State 2013 national champion, running back, and also should be Hall of Famer. Tight end for Florida State, Nick O'Leary. Hopefully have them on for the rest of the show. But gentlemen, we are going to go run through some 2013 FSU practice film from this time 10 years ago going into the 2013 spring. How are we doing, Stork? How are we doing, Josue? I'm doing good, man. Trying to get this damn camera. Doing great, man. Thank you for being on here, Josue. Glad to be back. Everybody, I'm glad you're here watching. Josue, real quick, man. Give us a little life update while we're at it. Let everybody know where you're Ooh. at, where you've been, and How's everything going for you? That's what I want to know. I want the fans to know where you're at right now and how everything is. Everything's going great, man. I obviously hung up, hung up the cleats. Uh, now I'm at Oklahoma as an assistant strength coach, and I'm trying to get these guys right. Uh, had I was pretty much a sore loser when we played you guys uh, <laughs> last season at bowl game. I want to get that double against the alma mater, but you guys got it. So it's been fun, man. It's uh, It's been a fun journey so far. How awkward was it feeling? Because when I was at Southern Miss, we played Florida State in the uh, – I don't know, whatever bowl it was in Shreve for, I can't remember anymore. But it was the most awkward feeling ever. Hell, I even played scout team uh, for a few series with all the calls, you know, the, all the Roger and Louie calls. And uh, it just felt really awkward, and you wanted to try so hard to win. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's Florida right. State, and it's weird to be on the other side, isn't it? Absolutely, man, especially when that, that war trying gets going on a third down. You're like, takes <laughs> <laughs> back some goose. Yeah, like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, but it's, uh, hey, it's Florida State, man. It's good. It's good. So are you an assistant strength coach there now? Yes, yeah, so I'm an assistant now. Worked my way up so far, so it's been a good journey, man. Just basically going from what we've learned and taking it up a little bit more. So yeah, it's been it's been fun. How uh how was the off season for you? That that's really like the strength coach's time. The people don't know this about programs. Like that is that's your season is the off season. The mm -hmm. the mad drills and all that. Like how was that for you? Did you guys go early in the in the morning or were you guys in the afternoon? Yeah, we were at 6 a.m. mad drills, four quarters, whatever you want to call them. And then after that, we had a lift. We had our guys here from uh, 11, 12, and then 1. I might be off in those times. Yeah, but it's, it's a grind because you got to do a lot. You got to prepare for the 6 a.m. lift. I mean, 6 a.m., uh, four quarters, and you got an afternoon lift. So it's a grind throughout the whole day. You're just working. How was it being with Venables? I thought whenever we were there for media week at the bowl game, He's very easy to like, I will say. Mm -hmm. No, because Venables is a grinder, man. He definitely knows what he's doing. I mean, the same guy you see, he's going he's gonna to be there. He's going to coach these guys hard. He has a plan for the defense. He wants guys executing at a high, high, high level. And uh, that's what you get, man. What you see is where you're going to get. So straight up, he's just a straight up dude, you know. It ended up being a good game. It was a lot better than we had thought or imagined going into it. And yeah. Florida State bringing you know, no guys opting out or anything. And mm -hmm. Oklahoma, y'all had a few outs. So it ended up being very good. And, you know, Florida yeah. State came away on top. But great game. Great game. Great crowd, too. No doubt. Well, that's you want awesome. to jump I'm, I'm doing... Huh? Sorry. I was going to say, do you want me to bring up the film now? Oh, yeah. Screw it. Why not? Uh, anyways, that's why I'm glad you're doing good, man. And I'm sure they got you working out with the offensive line. And uh, you probably oh, yeah. grind with those guys, right? That's all we know how to do, man. Grind. Work. <laughs> just grind. Just work through the, the pains. I swear to God, you might be a no lineman. You're sore as hell. But if you just go freaking lift, you'll feel a little bit better. Oh, absolutely. You know? Pick it up. Man, how much are you weighing right now? Speaking of me, I'm around 290. I, gained a little, I was a little fat boy during Easter. That's my <laughs> oh, no. Easter bunny. But, uh, yeah, I'm around 290, 280. You, know, well, you look good, man. I remember I saw you a while back in Nashville. You were like 240 or 250. <laughs> I, you, you look skinny as hell. I mean, I, I've lost the weight, too. Then I, I went back to 300, 315. So, like, I'm with it's you, man. Holidays, it's a battle. Man. It's the midnight munchies, man. They get you. <laughs> then Scooby Snacks, man. Yeah, oh. Scooby Snack. Don't much. get the Scooby Snacks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, yeah, man. No. So, Josue, tell me what real quick. What do you remember about this day? I, I, go ahead and uh, screen share. Yeah, Logan. I'll bring it up there. Oh, man. So I What do you remember about this day? Remember. And, like, as you can see, it says play 133. So, there was 133 <laughs> other shots or 132 other shots of some kind of film. 
So this was a long day. This is an end of practice, right? Like I remember this yeah. vaguely, almost blocked it out of my memory. But like, mm -hmm. tell us what you remember about this day and the feelings and uh, just what a wonderful day it was. Why don't you share? It was. It was a Saturday, Sunday afternoon. <laughs> nah, I remember <laughs> we did a full practice. We were doing a scrimmage that day. And that went. And then I don't know where we go to goal line. And that's when shit got crazy. <laughs> yeah. So basically, it, we're just there. I mean, I remember exactly this. The sequence was we were, I think it was, we scored, whoever scored was out. Right. Right. I think it was something like that. I think we scored the first play and Jim will go, suck on the defense, do it again. <laughs> well, no, see, yeah, that's what I thought too, Josue, but I went back and watched it. Uh, big shout out to my guy, Matt McCutcheon, for uh, he had this on his old hard drive and he, uh, yeah. he, I sent on a hard drive, he sent me this. So thank you, Matt. Uh, but yeah, a lot of things that I thought were went a certain way, they didn't. And <laughs> you can see a lot of little things that happen. You're like, oh, this is why it happened. Uh, yeah. But it was amazing to watch all of this fight. This is, I think, I feel like looking back at it, this mm -hmm. was the day that everything kind of turned around when we kind of knew we had more in us in the tank, mentally, Absolutely. physically. We were tested. This is the most tested I think I've ever been as far as a football player at this point in my life. Obviously, yeah. get to New England, well, that's a whole different animal, but – this right here was the most I think any of us had really been pushed. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, I'm with you on that, man. It we was... need it, but we were all banged up. Was this on a Saturday or a Thursday? Was this the week before the spring game? I, I can't think it was remember. The week before the spring game. Damn, but it was. It was well, this, play six. I don't know. I, I must have blacked out. Who knows? This yeah. must have been a rough day. <laughs> hey, must have been a really rough day. Yeah, just this... do it again. Do it again. After that, I was like, we're gonna be here a while. So like, <laughs> <Let's> again, <go." laughs> again, again. <laughs> Oh, all right. Well, yeah, let's just dive into it then. Oh, wait, are y'all – so whenever you're doing this right here before this, you know what you're going to be doing probably for the next hour or so, however long this was. Are you – I mean, are you, you're talking shit to the defense, right? I feel like that's what we keep on hearing from at least when Wilder, Wilder comes onto the show or Kenny's on here, Carlos. Like, I mean, does it already start chirping before the first snap or does that happen a couple plays later? It started in the beginning, but I think we were all so tired at the end. It was just like, damn. Yeah. And then eventually we get so tired, we're in mentally insane, and we're just mm -hmm. chirping the whole time. I think it was the whole like, cycle of it. It was weird. It, it was cheap in there after a while, too. <laughs> I, was, I yeah. saw a couple of high lows a couple of times, man. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's false starts on here. There's all kinds of stuff. But there, I think there's one time I think we did score where they didn't say we scored. It was just yeah. – if and, and, look, there's 23 plays here. And I won't, I won't get to – there's two ways you can break it down. If you just take it play by play, if we scored, we win. If, if defense stopped us, they win. Or you could go by the actual drives. If you mm -hmm. look down here in the bottom right, you see the one in uh, dash three, like right there, like that's the down and distance. So you can look at okay. it either way. Um, but I'll say either way, both sides won that day. But let's, let's, uh, let's jump into it and, and, okay. and check it out. Right here is a power look. We get stuffed. Tight end messes up. This improv play right here, I've tweeted this before. Basically, we're dead right here, right? And then Jimbo, I think this is what set Jimbo off and realized, all right, like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wear these guys out. Like, this isn't real football right here. But, I mean, and then obviously Jameis forgets he has a green jersey on, like <laughs> always. <laughs> but so right here, this is our two back power. What did we call this? Was it Pittsburgh or no Steeler? It would have been Steeler, Steeler corner. Yeah. But on the goal line though, was it Steeler Roger extra because we had so many freaking fullbacks in there? Oof, no, that's a, that's a good question. Who gives a damn? We'll call it Steeler Roger extra. All right, this yeah. is our goal now. That's way mm, Steeler. <laughs> yeah, Steeler. Steeler up. So right here, this is a bare front, and that means you basically got the center cover and both guards. And right here, we're gonna deuce. We got Trey Jackson and we got uh, Bobby Hart. We're gonna supposed to deuce back to the backside backer. That's Christian Jones. But the problem is where O'Leary's lined up in this extra fullback spot, that brings P.J. Williams down here right in this area of Bobby Hart. So as he's stepping down in there to gap it off, he could almost collect that. But really, we stay true. We just follow our rules. and we, They try to work to this backside. Now, I think Kevin Hapula is jacked up right here. You remember Kevin Hap uh, Is it Hapalia or Hapla? I can, I can never say it right. Yeah. Jersey guy. Jersey guy, that's right. Are, you're from – we're at in Jersey, Jersey. again? Uh, Union City. Union City. Y'all had the uh, stadium on your uh, – on, on the, the rooftop, roof, right? Yeah. The roof. That's awesome. Yes, mm -hmm. Playing the roof deck. But right here, I think Kevin's jacked up. He ends up blocking out on this uh, DN. And then right here, O'Leary ends up picking it up. 
and getting Dan Hicks right here. And basically this job of this fullback is go clean it up, go blow up that B to C gap right in between them. Now, Josue, you remember your rule pulling for Steeler? It was the first back or play side. Pretty much. Remember how they jacked the mics up calls on us from 11 to 13? They switched them back and forth. Yeah. Uh, so I remember that's, just, hey, that's first back to play side. Pull for him, you'll figure it out, right? <laughs> hey, Good Lord. Mic, ain't gonna call no mics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one of the mics. We'll pull for that guy. Now, Josue is supposed to pull around for PJ technically because he's in that first linebacker play side spot. But this gets all jacked up, and you'll see right here. And then the backside tackle, you got to go crab that out. You got to cut off the backside B gap and then the backside tied in, cut off the C gap. Nothing's there. Climb to the second level. But right here, this dude's man. This is Casher. He's man on him, so he'll lock on here. And we're going to let these two guys go. So let's let the camera roll. So you can see right here, it gets all jacked up. PJ shoots the gap. Dan Hicks shoots the gap. Everybody's all out of whack. Hostwell, mm -hmm. you just run into the whole pile just trying to knock it all out. I mean, what else could you do at that point? Make a hole. Try <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, just make a hole. Uh, square peg, round hole, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> square peg, round hole. But uh, so technically, if you count that, I think Jimbo counted that as them winning. And that's when he just got set off. He's like, fuck it again. I, I just remember turning around like, what the hell happened? Why is he freaking out? Like, what's the big deal here? What's going on? It's been a long ass day. And uh, we expected to go, what, five, eight plays this way? I think at most was four. Yeah, man. <laughs> Next thing you know, 23 plays later, 20 freaking three. It's unbelievable. Jesus. So this is one of our, our bread and butter goal line plays here. Basically, it's like outside zone with the lead fullback and then another fullback on the backside wrapping up uh, to get that middle backer. And right here, we fall short. As you can see, everybody's stretching on, on the track. We get blown up a little bit on the play side. How this is supposed to look in, in a perfect world, but again, Host way, what we say, when we regard them V's and B's, they're going to move. Oh, yeah. So not everything's perfect, right? Mm -hmm. but right here, I, I, did we call this, I don't know, because when I was with Randy, we called a few things different. But on the backside of all this, did we call it moron protection? Did we say moron? Asking I don't think so. To... I think we just said, hey, bring it or something. I don't know. But for this lead hook play, the center, you got the front side A gap no matter what. So if this backer would walk down in there, you would have to pick him up. But – you can leave two for the fullback and the other fullback. So that's the beauty about this. If, if you hit him in the mouth, great. We're a hat up. If not, you know, we have a lead back for him. So right here we got me and Ho Sway working literally the Straight. both front side A and back side A, right? Mm -hmm. And you got Bobby cutting off the backside B gap. And we're thinking yep. PJ because PJ's man on O'Leary. O'Leary's coming through to wrap through the front side A gap and blow up whatever shows who is this backer right here. So as that happens, and he's man on, on O'Leary, PJ is, he's going to either shoot this gap right here or he's going to come over the top. I think right here he ends up shooting this gap. So basically either Josue can end up on him, or if he goes over the top, Josue will take over the nose guard, and I'll work up to that backside PJ right there. Or he's really in the backside backer, but obviously we know he's a DB, and you're reaching frontside B gap. And then right here, fan, fan, get the fullback on Joiner. We got wrapping up here, and then you get the tight end, essentially just cutting off the C gap. So when we were at ETSU host way, we just call it moron for the backside. So if you screwed it up, you're a moron. <laughs> hey, that, our guy back, so that's uh, Trey Jackson from Jessup. Trey Jackson, man. I'll be damned. Oh, my bad. You're front side. I get all dyslexic. Yeah. There we go. So right here, we just – me and Trey end up leaving Stample. We're not on the same page here. Host way, you do a good job of getting Jacoby down the ground. Yeah. But – there's just a lot of bodies on the floor here. Mm -hmm. That's goal line Dude. play. This right here, this is where Joiner's a dog, man. I don't know how much, how many times you've had to go against Joiner just in certain plays, Osue, but man, man. undersized, but could just freaking rip your damn head off. Could absolutely rip, rip your freaking head off. Yeah, I mean, look at him. Dude. He just hog ties, hog wrestles. That's his Wilder, man. Down. I mean, Wilder's double his size, freak of nature. But Lamarcus Joiner just didn't give a. Fuck, how big you were. Let's be honest with you. He didn't give a shit. A little shout out to a few people here. Julie Crussell. She is at Texas A&M, right? Now, Josue? No, she is now with the with the Falcons. Oh, mm. Jake hired her. That's awesome. So Jake File was our trainer at the time who had to deal with the aftermath of all this and as well as the rest of the trainers. So that makes sense. 
And then this right here is Tyler. I think he's still at Ohio State. What was Tyler's last name? Do you remember? Not sure. Uh, sorry, Tyler. We love you, man. Uh, yes. O-H-I-O, right? And this here is Madeline Scarmuzo. She was a – these two were a graduate assistant at the time. Really good people took great care of us. This right here is Addison Lynch. He has now turned into a journeyman, a uh, journey coach. He's he's well-traveled now in the NFL. Really happy for him. He's always one of the sharpest dudes on that side of the ball, um, even though he wasn't a full-time guy. So always love to talk ball with him. And I think this right here is Big Bad Brad. This is our academic advisor. Kept, helped keep us eligible. So thank you, Brad. Uh, I don't know where Brad's at. Haven't really kept up with him, but um, – Really good dude. This right here is Lou. Uh, he looked like the guy from what was that movie that we went and saw as a team? Uh, he looked like the boxer from the jersey when they fought in Atlantic City. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> he looked just like the guy. I can't remember the damn actor. The actor's British. I can't remember his name. But anyways, really good dude. And this guy right here is George Hilo. He's now special teams inside or outside linebackers at Michigan with Coach Harbaugh, I believe. Um, he's also well-traveled. I think he was at Colorado State before that. Um, really good football coach. And this guy was a grinder. We'd be, we'd have 6 a.m. meetings. And this guy never went home. I think he was Addison's roommate. This is Addison right here. He was Addison's roommate, but he never went home. He literally slept in one of the linebacker meeting rooms in the position room. And as we were coming into our meetings at 6 a.m., he was getting up and then going back up to uh, really be 545 because we don't be late because Trick could shut the door at 550. And if we weren't in there, we were late. So he would be getting up, going up to work, brush his teeth. I think he'd go right back at it. So, um, the guy worked his ass off, and obviously it paid off. So a little shout-out to a few people there. Mm -mm -mm. Now, that's my whole thing, Josue. I like to point out all the people that nobody really knew about. No, I like it. I like it. But, man, again, Joyner just being a dog, so physical, coming downhill. Like, he could play in the box. That's why he's on the goal. Great eyes. Package. That's why he's still Great in the league. Eyes. Yeah. He's turned into a dream man, too, man. Yeah. A lot of people, you know, notice Derwin, Jalen – now you got Asante Samuel Jr., but people kind of forget Joiner's in the league because he doesn't do all the social media stuff. But that man's getting paid to go to yeah. his contract. Good for him, man. That's what it's all about. Support your family. And, you know, we talked about Joiner before on the last episode. It'd be Friday, host way during the summer. And you'd be, you know, you'd stop by, get a free milkshake from the weight room. Whose ass is in yeah. there doing extra shit at, at 4 30? Yeah. He is. Well, you know, yeah. so I'll never forget stuff like that. No doubt. So this right here, a little UConn action. We got a flat and a flag, and it gets all blown up. So, again, win for the defense. Not really good. So, rules for this, I think this is why later on, you'll. I, I was telling you, Logan, earlier, when they switched mm -hmm. O'Leary and Kevin, because you got a, a blocking tight end going on a route. He's going to go half the distance in the end zone to the back pylon. And then right here, we got the fullback slipping out to the flat. And I believe Joyner – is cutting off the widest rusher, and then as well as Nick cutting off the uh, rusher right off the tight end's ass. And then everybody, I think this is 246. The tight end should be out on the boot. I'm not for sure. I can't remember how Jimbo had it programmed, um, but it would make more sense if he was out. I can't remember his name. He was a walk-on, really good dude. I, my apologies, man, if you're watching. Uh, but uh, he's all jacked up. He's posting the freaking inside gap, and everybody's sliding to the left as the O-line, you know, trying to sell the run a little bit. Remember that Lake and River? That's the best protection out there. Oh, easy. <laughs> Just move this way. And then Razor and Lift. That was a good one too. A little uh, move the pocket. Oh yeah. But right here, you can see like if you're gonna throw this throw right here for Jameis, and the thing is like Jameis, he's ballsy, man. If he was a fighter pilot, he'd be Maverick. He would not give a shit. He's gonna go for it. So if he can, <laughs> he thinks he can run it. At, at this point in his life, he's gonna run it. But usually you just read this one to two right here. Now, if Kevin can get some, you know, separation, we might have a chance. But right here, uh, I think that's – is that Georgia? I don't know. He's doing a good job of kind of staying in the middle of these two where it makes it kind of tough. But if you can get the ball out now, it, it, it's got to go here. And then obviously trying to score. But that, that's just a little uh, – I think they called it UConn too when we were there. Remember all that random shit that they used to rattle off? We had no idea, Josue. Brody ran it. That we, yeah, we ran it. It was all the same stuff on with DTSU. So now I was like, oh, that's what that was. That was so, awesome. you know, life going full circle. Now that let's just it. talk about personnel real quick with these guys. By the way, big shout out to my wife. She's getting some snacks in the kitchen. She let me do this podcast tonight. We got a, a newborn baby. She's awesome. She's hot. She's pretty. And uh, baby's beautiful. So big shout out to them for letting me do this. Shout uh, out to Ms. Right Stork here, as always. Personnel -wise, huh? So shout out to Miss Stork as always. Oh, yeah. 
So Mario Edwards is a defensive end. Casher's a defensive end, right? Mm-hmm. Jacoby McDaniel's a, a defensive tackle. Stample right here, you can't see him in front of Christian. He's a nose guard. And I think this is DeMonte. He's a D tackle. He could play some DN too. Uh, Dan Hicks, defensive end originally. He might be an outside linebacker at this point. And I think this is Giorgio Newberry before he switched to tight end. So he essentially got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven D line. All right. And you got Telvin Smith, who's a backer, but really built like a safety, but just so physical, could play linebacker. And you got Christian Jones, who at one point was our Sam linebacker in our 4 3 with Stoops. But at this point, when Prue got there, I think he moved to like a stand up DN rusher kind of guy. So you can almost see that as 8D lineman, but I'll see him as a backer right now. And you got Joyner, who's a DB, and you got PJ tucked up in here because he's man on O'Lear right there. So you got two DBs and you got two linebackers. So that was, that was our personnel on goal line from Coach Pruitt. And by the way, hell of a ball coach. I don't care what you say about him, what went on at Tennessee, whatever. Uh, just a great ball coach. And, you know, Stoops was awesome. Hostway, there's no question. They were awesome coaches to be around. But, like, when Pruitt got there, things got – I think it made us better schematically for having to solve problems uh, in protections and blitzes in the run game, pass game. Uh, I felt like we got a lot better from all the various packages we would see. Would you say so? Oh, yeah. I mean, and the level of physicality, too, that those guys brought. Um, I don't know. It was just a different tempo during practice. I thought it was good. It was great. No, I love that, man. I just remember. You know who runs it? I forgot the blitz rejoiner will hide behind somebody. You, remember, you know what I'm talking about? He, I forgot what it was. He was It was a sonic. Behind, could, he was hiding was behind probably- the tackle. And that's when I had my first encounter with Joyner. I'm like, damn, little this little motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, was it one of those like exotic dime packages, like on like a third and long? Is that what you're talking about? Like the odd spacing? And I you just kind of float good. around shit? Oh, dude, we used to see some crazy shit. And like if you like learn football from the crib and then you get to the shit we were seeing from Pruitt, like all this stuff would make you break your rule sometimes. It's to the point, just snap the ball and get back and see who blitzes. And most of the time they were dropping eight anyways, right? Yeah. So it was only three rushes. So you just figure it out. But, that's good. That's so that's the personnel good. breakdown of this. And then, you know, this is obviously – we end up getting sacked right here. I, and I think Chad Abram right there, the fullback, started to Joe himself out of there on his own. You know, and you can see right there, usually this whole time we've, we've been talking, this dude right here, Stample's been right on me, but all of a sudden, boom, he moves over. Now he can play over the top. They're just exchanging gaps is all they're doing. But we just sell it to the left. We got the flat to the flag, and it's just not there. I mean, good job, defense. James. You got us, <laughs> bastards. Jameis liked risking it. He really did. It's funny. Did, you man. see it on the game. You see it in the film. I mean, you see it on the game field on Saturdays or Sundays, and you see it also in practice. It's just That's just how he plays. By the way, speaking of just, just old-school football player, really, this right here is old school football. Like there are, if you guys have noticed, there is zero wide receivers in the game right now. It's all tight ends and fullbacks and running back. It's basically 23 personnel. You count the fullback and running back as two, and you got the three tight ends, 23 personnel or power, however you want to call it. I don't know what they, I think they, at, when we were at Florida State, uh, Hostway, I think it was all colors. So What's like it really gives a shit out there anyway. So I'm just going to hit play. We're running the fullback dive. Got to love handing it off to the fullback. Reverse pivot by Jameis. <laughs> and we get stuffed. The line of scrimmage doesn't move very well. We're all falling on the ground. Hey, I and think then, this is when it starts right here. What play is this? Jacoby. <laughs> yeah, Jacoby's starting to get a little chippy, I can see. <laughs> oh, everybody is. We're all just pissed off that we all got to do this shit. Like, and the thing is, I like. I thought it was four play. I think it's like play 10 right now. What play is it? We're on play number five. We're, okay, we're play so we're five. Still. I know I'm taking my sweet ass time. But just talking about this fullback dive, because I like to talk scheme host way in case you haven't figured that out. Uh, <laughs> gotta, gotta talk that ball. I, I got all this damn knowledge. I got nobody to talk to. I mean, I've been hey, staying on that lately. So I'm like cabin fever and just drinking my Miller Lite and talking a little ball. All right. Hey, man. You, ever see, you ever seen them coaches from like Alabama in the South? Every time, every time they say something, it's all right. <laughs> it's it's the worst. I'm like, I, and after that, I, I can't stop. I can't stop noticing the all Wait. right, and I can't even like listen to what they're talking about schematically. <laughs> Hold up. Wait, I got a question for Josue. Was Brian ever this talkative in the locker room or during his time at Florida State? I don't. I don't think so. Oh, yeah, I, I never there. got to know him then. Yeah, well, it was there. <laughs> yeah. Just well, depend on what night it was. 
depending on the night and and yeah. whatever wherever the dartboard was, <laughs> and uh, possibly wherever the fire was, or mm-hmm. you know, back in the day we used to go out in the Appalachian Coal Forest, have a lot of fun there too. Good times. Trying to get your trucks dug. <laughs> Damn, I haven't thought about that place in a while, but. <laughs> Yeah, usually I wouldn't just talk. There's no question. But right here, this is that full back dive. This is good stuff right here. Again, you protect the front side A gap at center. They got essentially base blocks across the board. As if, if I'm O'Leary, I'm blowing this B gap up to the first backer that shows, which is going to be PJ. And then really right here, Telvin is the, the free guy. Host way, you got the backside A gap to whatever shows. And, yep. you know, you can see all they're doing is just taking and moving it. And then Christian would have this A gap, and then Stample's got the A gap. And earlier you saw Stample on the other side, and Christian flip. So this is good stuff by them. Then cutting off backside, and then obviously reverse pivot right here. But my favorite part about this play, I actually brought it up uh, to Randy. We played Chattanooga uh, 2021. Our fullbacks, when we run fullback dive, it was great. But our running backs were stepping this way to the same play, like the same side. You always remember it, us. Our fullback dive was just like the one on Madden from like the one we grew up. The fullback, or excuse me, the running back goes opposite just to pull and hold anybody on that backside. And really, you can always fake the fullback dive and flip it. So we did that in Chattanooga, and we ended up scoring the damn freaking play. It was unbelievable. But uh, this this is why I love this play. And I love the, the uh, tailback going opposite. So if I'm ever a coordinator someday, Josue, I'm probably screwed. I'm giving all the goodies out. Very good. Get some eye That's violations right. off them. Got them right where I want them. Mm-hmm. But right here, just a little fullback dive. Run the damn ball. Hashtag RTDB, right? Josue, oh, man, you couldn't get your damn feet in the ground. Jacoby's freaking going for your ankle. That's where it gets crazy right here. I think I got cut. You like, did. Man, tackle. <laughs> it was smart by him. He's like freaking uh, – he's like Spider-Man right here, just sprawling out like them damn mat drills. What was going on out here? Holy shit. Man, that was mm. tough. I'm telling you, dude, everybody at some point, I was telling Logan before we got on the air, everybody at some point on this film gets exposed. Every single player. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. That's how it goes. Joyner definitely did shoot out. Like, that dude is a cannon. Have you seen him do, like, dumbbell curls? He's got freaking 65, 70s, 80s in there. He's got <laughs> cannonballs for arms. He's, he's an awesome dude. Appreciate you, College Football Central. This is a good comment here from John Piggins saying, toughest game of the year was practice, probably. <laughs> It really was, wasn't it, Josue? Oh, yeah. If we could execute. Hey, real quick, ahead. you remember that practice before the Rose Bowl? When, uh, the very last one? Seth and Darby returned it. <laughs> the, oh, the very, very last one? Yeah, and then Darby throws the ball at you, and then we had this all-out brawl. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, that one. That was before we left for the Rose Bowl. That was when we were practicing <laughs> yeah. in Tallahassee still. Yeah, yeah I remember that. Happened? Yeah. I Our think I was always at a, at a high level like that. It's true. Yeah, he what intercepted happened? it. And I, I, I went to go tackle him, but I, like, obviously, his fucking Darby, he's so quick and shifty. And the only way, thing I could do was grab his fucking face mask. So I grabbed his face mask, not giving a <laughs> shit. And it's like, it's practice, whatever. It's probably not the best thing to do your teammate, but shit, he probably would have done the same if it was the other way around. So why not, mm-hmm. right? I'm trying to compete. <laughs> and he just threw the ball at me, and I was like, fuck no. And we just went at it. And uh, right. really it good time. It was a bench clearing, bro. I'm talking about defense, offense. It was like nice. something out of 300. <laughs> but dude i was kind of in the mood though you ever like get in that mood like i remember some of us would get in the mood i was like you know what something needs to happen today like something's got to get going we need some juices flowing let's get some goosebumps mm-hmm. and let's get the neck on our hair standing up or the hair on our neck standing up let's go and mm-hmm. you know one of us would eventually start fighting uh oh, yeah. if we didn't it'd be o'leary right wherever the, he mm-hmm. is stuck in traffic uh at the master's <laughs> convention still, thing whatever like the golf still thing at the do. masters Hold yeah still at the master's is he, is he waiting on the uh, 10 o'clock at uh, hole nine or whatever? Uh, yeah, whole I guess so. Yeah, guess waiting for so, the sprinklers. Man. That's all right. We'll, we'll wait. We'll wait for him. We'll wait for him. That's all right. We'll, we'll have a party of three right now. Mm. Yep. So this is how you know something's up. Because you can see O'Leary's been that lead fullback the whole time. And all of a sudden, now he's the wide tight end. And no longer the extra uh, fullback. <laughs> all he's going to do is motion him over here. So this takes PJ with him. And then everybody's going to go this way. This is our eight Roger right here. And I think he runs a boot. And then he ends up running the flag half the distance uh, in the end zone to the back pylon. And I think our running back actually slips out here. 
or maybe the fullback. I can't remember. I think because I think we're going bluff with it. And then it's like a loop pass. Remember loop pass? I think this is loop pass, but it was like kind of built in like eight Roger, eight Louis for the concept. Let's see. Only looked at this thing three or four times. But you can see right here, he's like, no, and you see Jimbo and, and Brewster. Remember Coach Brewster, man? Oh, yeah. That's the guy this right is there. his first spring here. So Coach Brew is right here. He's now at Colorado with uh, Coach Prime, uh, Coach Sanders. I don't know what he likes to be called, but uh, one of the two. And uh, he's probably just learning what Jimbo likes, all, all the terminology, all that. It's tough being in this offense. It is tough being a tight ends coach because there's so many multiple things you can do. And you got to almost like you got to watch, be able to see both sides of the field at the same time. So I'm sure his mind is spinning at this point. <laughs> He's like, shit, I got to get in the damn playbook this summer because it's a lot of crap. But uh, he, he did a good job that last year when I was there, keeping them all uh, in check. But I feel bad for him right here because, you know, Jimbo is Jimbo. But, you know, Speaking of, how was that working at Texas A&M for Coach Fisher? Was that fun? No, it was awesome, man. Oof. So it was basically yep, a pass. Pass. Yeah, man, it was. What was the difference from hey, nice cut. Coach play? Yeah, nice cut. You guys can see no, right here. Cutting. Usually, I don't think we have a cut on a on a. Hey, on Roger. Naked. No, yeah. we never did. You know why we called it eight, Roger? Everyone. Boots. I don't know if I can say this, but so you take the eight. You, oh, you did this before. You did this on the first show. <laughs> and it's your naked protection, right? I don't have to say it. Cancel are, me, whatever. Yeah. My apologies, but <laughs> pretty funny. That's how you remember. It's word association. If if you're you know people like us that are simple minded, you got to do things like that so you can remember. Especially you know if you're young, dumb, and full. You know what? Like we were in college, we were ready to go. We we played hard. We worked hard. We were ready to go. So um, everything was fourth and one. Oh, this is a good play right here. This is great. That's Moving the pile. Mm. Bobby right here does a great job. By the way. Shout out to Bobby Hart. Good dude. He's still going, isn't he? Yep. He is. He is. He's, He's about about the yeah, yeah. I actually had somebody reach out to me from them. That a guy I played with reached out to me, asking me about him. And I said, remember how smart Bobby was uh, as a freshman? I mean, he was able to play as a freshman because he was so smart. I mean, obviously yeah. going to St. Thomas, all those really good football coaches, they teach them football there. And then it starts from ninth grade on. Uh, so good for him. I think he started his first game at 16, 17 years old. That's, you know, pretty incredible. But right here, we get really good movement by Bobby right here, Kevin. And right here, essentially, you just got to leave two for the two fullbacks, right? Leave two. So, Chad will go blow up him. I think that's uh, Joyner. And then right here, O'Lear will go try to – however he can get through, whether it's the front side A, back side A, or the front side B, he's going to get to that back side backer. And then we're all moron right here just trying to cut off our front side gap and essentially let the widest guys go. It's a great play. And do you remember uh you remember the play Hammer, Josue? Might have to refresh me there. Oh. It was basically like, you know, you know what duo is now. They never taught us duo, but you know what duo is? Yeah, two double team but the... it's basically yeah, power no pull. The yeah. probably gap gap uh, run scheme with no puller is all it was with, with extra fullbacks. Uh that was some good stuff that we used to run as well. I don't know if you remember it, but uh we ran at ETSU as well. So this is where it can get tricky right here on this backside. So right here, I leave Josue to hang. As you can see – sorry, Josue. Huh. <laughs> this isn't because Josue sucks. This is because I suck. I tried to get through too quick to this backside backer. Good thing is O'Leary is there to clean up any trash and try to get to that backer. He can still get there. You just got to clean up the trash, whatever shows. Again, on goal line, you need a yard and a half every rep, at least a yard and a half to get – and eventually you're going to be in the damn end zone, right? So that's all you need. And Bobby gets this dude going. And then Chad does a good job of coming through and finding Joiner and then, you know, lowering his pads. But again, Joiner's no freaking, he's no puppy, man. Like he's a dog and he's going to get down in there and, and he's going to freaking bow up. So that was some really good shit by him. Hmm. I wasn't that one. But yeah, there, I got so many clips in my head of Joiner just messing people up. But yeah, right here, you see Chad, like Dan Hicks was in his way. So he just, like, Chad's like, all right, I was going to blow this up too. Because really his responsibility is to go blow up that damn B gap. Mm -hmm. Just like outside zone lead. And then uh, host way, when we are at ETSU, we ran inside zone lead. So we didn't, you know, we weren't like, we were FCS programs, so a little bit different. Uh, but we were so good at outside zone. This is our bread and butter. However we could run outside zone, host way, like that's what we did. And I, I would say we spent, what, 20, 25 minutes every day, if not 30, 
just doing our steps on outside zone, just stretching, stretching versus every blitz known to man. That like that was every day. That was the routine. Oh, watch, uh, watch, mm. watch our boy O'Leary right here. So he's gonna go try to clean that up again, right through there. But uh, unfortunately, physics are a bitch. Mm. Right, physics are a bitch. <laughs> O'Leary gets killed by two people, but. The reason why he got killed, because the center is an asshole. And I'll say that again. The center is an asshole in this plane. I'll show <laughs> what you, you doing down there on the ground, Brian? What you doing yep. down there? It's just, I am freaking <laughs> useless. I'm useless. Oh, okay, Nick's kind of dinged up. See him? You see him? Look, look, go back to it. <laughs> it's coming. You, you'll see it right here. I think this is – didn't O'Leary crack his rib on this? This is why I wanted him on, because I'm pretty sure he cracked his rib from the source. I have source is, but really it's source. And – Right here, I think he cracked the rib. I think uh, Wilder separated his AC. Mm. So, yeah, O'Leary gets blown up by two dudes. And I just go down into the ground like an asshole. Later on, I get him killed again, too, because I went the wrong way. But I go down like an asshole. I really should be getting to PJ that's coming over the top because O'Leary's working to Christian number seven. So this was, uh, this one's fully on me. Ooh, Christian Jones and then PJ. <laughs> PJ's a damn good ball player. He's still going. But touchdown. And the, the, you'll see later on, there'll be some of those pile ups, and you'll see uh, Jameis come up with the green jersey and try to push the pile. And you'll see Lamarcus Joyner start to get pissed off. Be like, what's the deal? Is he live or is he not? Remember how Joyner was? He's like, if he's going to be live, be live. And then what was Joyner going to do? He was going to go fuck him up. Crack some up. <laughs> What uh? This was the same spring that Joyner was kicked out of practice too, right? Was were was you there for that? Which one are you referring to? The one he it was in the stadium. To? He's like, all right, you little motherfucker, you can get your fucking ass out of here. <laughs> 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 no, fuck you, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, on my boy, uh, the receiver. He jumped. It was on the goal line. He jumped up. The kid was like six feet up in the air. Joyner, damn, jumped from the ground and met him. In the, met him. I think as he was coming down, Joyner kind of jumped. He caught him. Put him I, in the cockroach. I, could, I couldn't remember if it was him or Greg Reed because I think Greg Reed had a few instances too where he just knocked the shit out of people and Jimbo would just yeah. kick his ass out because you know you're an offensive head coach you have the power to do that and DB screws up your wide receiver when it's unnecessary. Yeah, your ass is out. It's it's, it's guaranteed. Throws ass out the club. Yeah, that's some good times right there. Nah, oh, yeah. this was what 2014. All we've heard because media was there that day, but Ramsey also got thrown out and everybody was freaking out. Oh my God, is he suspended all this deal? But he just simply got kicked out from Jimbo. I, don't th I think people don't understand that happened quite a bit under Jimbo. Yeah, it is. Like when it you is, have man. a team like this, I mean, when you have that fire and, you know, Brian, you're trying to start shit just to get the day popping a little bit. <laughs> how it goes. Yeah. This is a good job right here by everybody just getting in the end zone. And essentially, if you're an offensive lineman, the whole goal is to take your dude and move his ass in the end zone. So, like, right here, this is a really interesting front, by the way, for any of you football nerds out there. You look at this, you know, usually I'd said it was a bear front where you had a zero nose, where that means the nose guard is completely head up on the center. But what they did was there's a lot of fronts in the NFL to do this. Host way, I know you've seen this, where it's called a guts front. Hey, we got there's Ruben. Ruben. There's Ruben. 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 Hey. <laughs> Dude, I when I broke down the Oklahoma game, I found you in the crowd, man. We circled you out and everything. Remember that, Logan? Yep. So, yep, so I Ruben, I gave you a shout out, brother. And I'm giving you another shout out. Shout out to you right too, here, this man. is a guts look. I I love this front right here because it's easy to block. But essentially, oh shit! I don't know. Is it, is it freezing on you? Yeah. Hold on. Just give me a second. Let me uh let me pull my thing. Next down out. here. Sorry for this, guys. It's going to be in the way. No, I'll be all right. We'll should survive. be able to get her done. My bad, guys. This this all of a sudden decided to act up today. So that's going to no, be really good. fun. And, and Jernigan wasn't in on this. I think people are going to probably start noticing here if they haven't already, but number eight. Yeah, he's back there, this. Stan, I think, with Coach Graham at, at this point. Yeah, I think he, he was injured. I think he had an ankle or something like that. But back to this mm -hmm. front, this is like essentially two D tackles. This is another nose tackle. That's another tackle. Like that, That's how they play it. You can do that with Christian Jones. 
One, he's built like a brick shit house. Two, he's played Sam linebacker. He's played in the box. Three, the dude was a freak. And a really, and four, really a, a great dude. Probably most importantly, really great dude. Um, he was always kind of in the same spots we were, Hostway. I seemed like when mm-hmm. we were off the field. Yeah. Uh, used, used to run into him a lot and uh, really good human being. I think his dad played for Florida State too. Um, mm. Really good dude. Yeah. But just another way to get to this front with the peoples they had. Everybody's hooking them up. And it's a good job by Chad. Big pad Chad. Like you'll see right here, Bobby's struggling a little bit on, on Dan Hicks. Dan Hicks finally had enough of that shit. Uh, his dad also played for Florida State too. But Chad comes in here to blow that up. And we're all just covering our backside gaps. Really good job, uh, O'Leary. This is a this is tough because O'Leary could really help himself out here. I'm sure he really want to listen to this shit, huh? That's why I don't need you to tell me how to fucking coach me. But <laughs> right here, if I'm O'Leary, I'm I'm stuck behind the tackle, and I got to get to a backside backer and go clean up this front side a gap. I'm gonna cheat my split in a little bit, but you got to find the happy medium so you don't run into the quarterback. So that that that's the shit you run into for, uh, and you tied in fullback guys out there. But good job, Josue. I think you threw a cut right there, didn't you? Oh yeah, that's good shit. It's live. <laughs> that was your go-to. He said it's live. It's live. <laughs> Love it. This really good push by you, Josue, on the uh, nose guard. Just for for everybody, if it's hard to see or whatever, just look at the surge that you see in the middle of the screen right here. Just watch how it moves that way. Because what we want to do. On offense, we want to offend them. We want to offend them that way. Get north, right? Where the offense is it right? Is that Stample? Mm-hmm. That's Stample. That? Really okay. good dude, by the way. Big boy. Mm-hmm. Big boy. But watch the pile right there. Good job, Osway, cutting all yeah. that off. And obviously, we hit this front side. But I just want to point out good asshole line play. Mm-hmm. And our bodies really basically just took up all that space. This is tough on Josue and I, too, because, like, you're, it's goal line. You want to get low. You want to cover all that shit up, and you don't want nobody getting in there. But sometimes when you got your eyes down a little bit and this dude is quick and slimy and, and, and he's squirrely, as you're trying to get in, faced into this a little bit, that's why they're, they're teaching him now, like, kind of be more faced out. But I think that makes you higher. There's a time and place, no question. On the goal line, got to get low. But this mm. is tough because we're trying to work this to here. But he just squirts through there as we're both kind of faced in. I'm trying to give him enough color to take that over, but he backdoors it, the backer spot. That's why he's able to score it through there. That's not really host way. That's just – that's a scheme thing because you usually got this dude right here playing this backside shoulder of me. You got him in the B gap, and you got another dude in that gap. So, I mean, that that's really tough. I'm making you look good, host way. Go ahead. I'm, not, I'm not trying to give you excuses. That's just – it's a tough block at the guard on the backside. Mm-hmm. You see right here the fullback, and then O'Leary coming through. He's like, I don't want none of this shit. Just tries to go Damn. down cut him. And when in doubt, level one first, too, right? Yeah, take care of level one, right? Just remember how uh, – was it 2012 when we probably should have had a chance to the national title, just but we, we screwed up for NC State and Florida, right? Mm. But Trickett's like, I, I talked to those guys from Alabama. They just take – they don't even care about the fucking linebackers. They just <laughs> take them and put them in their laps. They, they take care of level one. And, like, ever since he said that, though, in, like, that goofy-ass way – like, it just stuck with me. I was like, why don't you just take care of level one? And then as I'm coaching later down the road, I'm saying the same shit. You yeah. know, get the play started, move the line of scrimmage. So, win for the offense right there. What is our count at now? Do we have the count? We are, who's as winning? far as who's winning, who's losing? Yeah. Uh, The count, I should have probably had one. But I just no, got. You're good. I, I think you're about to go on a run here, at least offensively, or soonish, kind of. Yeah, we are. So, if you counted by the drives, uh, I know if I can't see the down and distance right there. You see Jameis shoving his head in the pile there. If you count the down and distance and the drives, I think I think we're ahead right now. But the first three drives, uh, defense won. They were really good. And this is a touchdown right here because this is what I love about Jameis right here. Like, he knew for a young kid, Josue, like, I know we, we looked at him as a freshman or whatever, but he came in there and he didn't act like it. And oh, that, like, yeah. it just – what, for whatever reason, once EJ left and after he got done redshirting and he was like that freshman, I didn't really feel like he was a freshman. I knew he was, but I didn't yeah. feel like it. Just the way he was a leader. And you want to elaborate on that? I feel like I've been talking the whole time. No, I mean, like you said, he had that swag. You know, he just walked in the huddle, had command of the huddle, um, demanded high level of play. 
played like it too, like you just saw there. I mean, I mean, it was nothing but respect for the guy. I mean, just because he carried himself that way, you know, it wasn't all talk. It was actually actions. So something you appreciate about a young quarterback like that. Josue, what was the difference between Jameis and EJ? What, what would you say stand out? Uh, Jameis kept us in our stance too long when he was making adjustments. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> he, he would see some shit and then he would call a concept and fucking throw the wrong read, but still get a damn touchdown. Yeah, no, I mean, I thought both guys played at a high level. You know, I, honestly, for me as a lineman, it's kind of hard to tell you honestly the truth. I'm just worried about my guy and, and scoring touchdowns. So, I mean, I'm worried about my job. I really can't tell you. But, I mean, both guys, when we needed plays, they came in clutch. Like, EJ Manuel, Virginia Tech, that, that 2012, when we needed a touchdown to Rashard Green, boom. Mm. And you got – Jameis in the national championship, both guys play at a high level. I mean, it's, it's a hard question even to even answer. Yeah, now. very similar. Yeah, yeah. I had somebody on on one of the things I did. I think it was on the Renegade Report. Asked me, oh, if if, uh, if Jameis would have started in 2012, we win the national championship. And I was like, hell no. I was like, no. I was like, it takes a couple years to know what's going on in Jimbo's head and on offense. And yeah. EJ like grew every day, and and he worked at it. EJ had to work at it. And I know it wasn't easy for him. And uh, that dude grind his ass off. So, like, when we won national championship, I saw him. I was like, damn. Like, I wish he was still here, too, you know, just so he could get himself a ring as well. So, a lot of respect for him. Mm. How often would James make adjustments to the line? Uh, He would. Definitely. It was more so in practice, though. Yeah. You know, and then, obviously, I think we usually had a two-play check system. It was like something Roger check Louie, whatever yeah. it was, whatever number or term, right? Hostway, do you – is that how you remember? Yeah, it? so it was that. And then we then we got fancy. It was like we started adding like Sammy stuff, like Sammy's, like check stretch or something to something else. You remember? Oh, it it, like, it, are you talking about after I left? It got weird. I heard. Yeah, it was like some play like sap check stretch check power. It, it was we got really. really oh, there seal check while. stretch check lead. Shit yeah, like that's that. what it was. Yeah. Yeah, and before y'all got there, seal used to be a whole nother other. It was like a, a two by two, uh, pin and pull scheme. So it was totally different. Like we started out like numbers and shit. I don't know if you, I don't know if you ever got taught the numbers. Maybe when you first got there, but then it just turned yeah. into we like got away actual, from the numbers. <laughs> it was like 40, 41 power. No, it just turned into freaking Steeler in Pittsburgh. You know, or it was just uh, like three, three Roger, and you had to know what it was. You know, yeah. Like what the hell is three? And then we just, I just remember us sitting there with our notebooks and our chicken scratch handwriting, just quizzing the shit out of each other. That was, uh, that was a bitch. Thanks, Chad. I appreciate that, Chad Kinsler. It was a good one. Jordan Travis is going to be goaded this season. I hope so, man. I hope hope he can just like ignore all of us, talk about how great he is. I hope he can just go in there just like we did Josue as a whole team and just keep it Absolutely. as a team, focus on beating the greatest team at Florida State in history and yeah. just freaking go do it. And don't worry about how everybody's telling you how individually great you are because obviously at the end of the day, you know, Jameis will tell you, we won him the Heisman. You know, we, I got an award. Y'all won that for me. You know what I'm saying? Everybody got awards, but the thing is, we were just winning. We didn't yeah. give a mm -hmm. shit about that. And I'll say that over and over and over. And, like, a lot of people can say, oh, you're just saying that to be right. No, no. that's just the way it was. We never – did you ever hear the H word come out of uh, uh, Jameis's mouth? I didn't. I didn't hear him ever say Heisman, right? Mm -hmm. Nobody ever talked about that. We hardly ever even said national championship. Mm -hmm. We never did. Mm -hmm. We didn't We didn't talk about it. We just focused on on, you know – we're, we're like, shit, it's just Tuesday, man. Tuesday's a work day. We got to go. <laughs> Tuesday and Wednesday. Oh. <laughs> yep. And then right after, get your damn tacos. You go get your tacos and your guts are all jacked up from working your ass off. And you're yeah. just trying to recover, eating tacos in the cafeteria. But uh, big uh, shout out to those people that took care of us in that uh, department as well. Not uh, so the nutrition staff. Yeah, I was going to say, Josue, I want to ask you, how close have you kept in contact with Vic? I mean, you're in that field now. Do you keep in touch with um, him? No, nah, I haven't. I mean, we played him. Uh, we played Baylor this year. We got, I got to uh, talk to him for a little bit. But, yeah, Vic is doing mm -hmm. great. Still yeah. has his shades on. Stork loves him. <laughs> He's my favorite. Style, no, Coach Vic, uh, hell of a guy, man. No, yeah. Where's the sunglasses at night? <laughs> Warm in the Death Valley 2013. <laughs> yeah. It was every game. It was awesome. Hey, be you, Vic. I love it. Don't stop. Yeah, sure. Where's he at now? Is he at Baylor still? He's at Baylor. Yeah, he's doing a great job. I mean, he had a his team. They they look apart too. I mean, big strong offensive lineman. I mean, he's doing a hell of a job over there. And you can see how they play too. You know, I mean, they had yeah. TCU on the ropes this year. So, 
That's right, they did. Yeah. You see Ruben's little comment there, Josue? What's that? What's your favorite joke that Trey could tell someone, Josue? Oh, God. <laughs> it's a family really? show. Really? Right? <laughs> put it in a hard spot. You, you, you ain't got uh, none, Hoswai? <laughs> you lose. You lose. <laughs> no, I'll share that one. Hey, listen, there was this one time we're having this meeting, and I forgot what it was, but he goes up to this guy, and he's like, hey, listen, have you ever seen a cow take a shit? <laughs> and that smoke comes off that cow shit. <laughs> That's he right there. He ooze off the ball. Like, smoke coming off cow shit. <laughs> Now, listen, it's 6 a.m. We've got to sit there with a straight face. Very hard. <laughs> but, it's, <no. laughs> it's so hard. Well, come on, How many times did you bite your lip and it started bleeding? <laughs> uh, anyway. I remember one time I, I got caught laughing in the back because he was giving Blake Snyder some shit. And I, I was like this, trying not to laugh. And he was like, I'll cover your fucking mouth. I'll come there, I'll choke your ass out. <laughs> I literally thought it was a full metal jacket for a second. I was like, all right, I'm good. I was like, I'm good. Yes, sir. Just try not to laugh. You bite your lip and your lip's bleeding. So good times. <laughs> Ooh, off the ball, like steam off cow shit. Man. <laughs> but seriously, though, he I mean, obviously you didn't ooze off the ball, but you ever seen steam come off the cow shit in the morning dew? My hurt is slow. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. And this is a great job by Jameis, by the way. <laughs> nice transition. Look at Lamar- Marcus right here trying to take this shit on. Ooh. And he's like, what Look the hell? You'll see at the very end. He's like, what? what's the deal here? Like, is he is he live or not? Oh, man. Oh, yeah, at that point, you know, Jimbo cannot get mad. I'm sure he would. Look at Jameis getting on. I love that. That's hilarious. It's in everybody. <laughs> he's shit. getting up. He's flexing on top of uh, Joyner just to, you know, tick him off just a tiny bit. <laughs> Another full back dive. Oh, and Ooh, right goodness. here, watch Wilder. Right here at the bottom of the screen, number 32. Watch him try to come help out uh, Chad getting blown up. He's getting Boom. his leg. Hicks is picking up his leg. Stork, at the end of this play, what are you thinking here? <laughs> at the what? At the end of this thing? At the pile. Go ahead. At the end of the play. <laughs> oh, I was like, well, I get a couple second break right here. I'm just going to roll over Josue. <laughs> <laughs> this nice soft spot. <laughs> Oh yeah! Oh, this is hilarious. I was just trying to take a quick little, you know, what do they call it? A siesta? Is that nap for Spanish? Oh yeah. Is it? Take a quick it, one for the next play. Pretty much, yeah. I, I'm just sitting here sucking it off, not doing a great job. This is tough on this fullback dive because, <laughs> and just, I'm just, I'm, I'm worthless. It's like I tweeted this out, like right here, when you try to go help out your boy in in, in the bar, and you go run, you know, you go help out your guy, you get the shit knocked out of you, and your buddy over here. Had too many beers and he's fucking useless too uh, across the room. He can't come help you. So everybody's just getting their asses whooped right now. And, uh, you know, we're all here just freaking useless. So, oh, yes. Again, I told you, yeah, everybody gets uh, everybody gets exposed there. They're most pissed off. What the fuck is going on? Why, why can't we move the damn goddamn line of scrimmage? <laughs> <laughs> well, we just ran fullback dive and we had nobody to block these two assholes that came from the second level. That's why, Chill, Jimbo. Man. <laughs> oh, uh, I'm gonna get myself in trouble on here. I swear, I'm never gonna get the coaching no, job no, ever no, again. Don't take me down with you, man. Now, who's in the? <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not gonna put you in, in a tough spot. That that was, <laughs> by the way, Ruben. Man, that's tough, man. Telling the real funniest jokes we can't even talk about on here. Mm-hmm. This is a good oh, job that we right. finally scored a touchdown on the fullback dive. It's beautiful. Wilder forgets his fullback dive and decides to run up in the hole. I think he wants to go help block. Probably. Who knows? We're just all sick of it at this point. He's coaching. Yeah. Oh, Josue is being a good boy right now, Tommy M. Because I'm just telling you, he does not better, with, with, especially with Coach Trickett. <laughs> I'd have you stand up and do a damn pass there real quick with the little. Hey, you see this right here, though? We're over here. Everybody has a four-point stance. He has to take off. Yeah, you see Trey Jackson in a four-point stance. D-line's in a four-point stance. You're in a four-point stance. Hell, I think even my ass is in a four-point stance. This is uh, just come off the damn ball. We end up moving. Yeah, but last three plays, though, it looks like we did it. It looks like a pile of shit, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. (laughs) But, I mean, hey, at the end of the day, man, do you move them a yard and a half, right? Right. This is really really tough. This is a tough play right here with the fullback dive. And really, Abram should have followed it to the B gap with O'Leary. But there was a little cutback lane because Trey Jackson cleaned it up on the backside. Mm. So that was really good stuff. 
Brian, this is first team nonstop for 20 something plays. There's no in between second team jumps in or anything. So mm -hmm. offense never subbed on this, but I noticed towards okay. the end, eventually Joyner came out, Terrence Brooks came in, and then um, number 11, uh, defensive lineman, Josue. Oh, oh, God, I can see his face. He jumps in. Mitchell, Derek Mitchell. Derek, Derek Mitchell, Mitchell jumps in eventually. D Mitch, yeah. And, uh, because Eddie's knee was messed up. I ended up seeing him on the sideline. He's, they're talking about their brace with Jake and Geronimo. And then I know uh, Timmy was jacked up with his ankle. But, yeah, everybody else was just in. Telvin stayed in the whole time. PJ stayed in. Uh, Christian stayed in. Damn. So, this is this is tough on Jordan, too, getting scissored right here. just freaking getting mm -hmm. smacked all around. I don't know if it's too glitchy or not. But and my favorite right here is Odell. Hey, you. Hey, you. Look at this. <laughs> Hey, Look you. at the hand. You gotta do that. You gotta do that. Uh, <laughs> your brother's keeper. <laughs> Remember that? I you love that demonstrated Odell, drill. Odell, like, he says things and you can't forget them. I just I love the crap out of Odell, man. He's a great dude. Mm -hmm. But he uh I, I'm so happy for him. Like a a true seminal through and through. Gets to wake up every day and do what he loves and he Ruben's gets to insane. be at home. Look, look how Cam does yep. cash at the end. Oh, no doubt. By the way, I, there's a few times where I should have pointed out, Cam. Thank you, Ruben. Uh, that dude came off the damn ball. By the way, is Cam in Carolina now? Or... Uh, yes, I think he is. Okay. I think I ask this every damn fucking show. I don't know. I just mm -hmm. forget. Yeah. But, it's hard to keep up. Definitely yeah. with the offseason. You never know who's signing with who. You don't. Know. Oh, God. All right. So this is where the center is terrible, right? The play is going to the right. Uh, but apparently for this moment in time, it was opposite time and, uh, center goes left oh, check and then Chad just gets met with just a pile of bodies. Yes. Well, Larry got a little bit of that too. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh yeah. I get O'Leary killed right here again. Right. Not really, but look at PJ though. PJ's in a different rush posture than, than before, right? Earlier mm -hmm. you saw him over here, but O'Leary tightened up a little bit. Now he's in a freaking sprinter stance. You see his feet. Screw it. Just go blow up that gap, right? I mean, that's Dude. a ballsy call or a ballsy thing to do. Or, or at this point, maybe he's freelancing. But if I'm a defensive coordinator, I'm not sticking to DB in the damn A gap. But, uh, again, we were a little unorthodox on that side of the ball. I was going to say Pruitt lo loved, at least in this – during this practice, he loved putting P.J. Williams in different little spots. I mean, and Joyner – I mean, both yeah, of them. But P.J., he put him in quite a bit. It's it's wherever O'Leary's at, wherever this lead back is at, that guy. So you got a fullback and another fullback technically, or a Z tight end, whatever. So wherever he was, that's where he was lined up. Okay. Because like in order to be gap sound, and then like basically, oh. so they can't add an extra hat to wherever. Like you got to have that dude there just to have a chance to stop it on the goal line. So True. But that's why defenses do it, and you know most defenses are obviously cover zero. I don't think they're – like, all these packages, you, you got to be mad, especially with tight ends, right? Like, I'm not going to play zone on the freaking three-yard line. I don't know. Oklahoma might host away. I don't know. But uh, I'm just messing with you, dude. I'm not going to put you in that <laughs> <laughs> By the way, you guys got a really cool defense. I like the, I like the stuff you all do uh, when I was breaking down the Florida State game. There's some really good stuff. Uh, the three-down stuff. Like a lot of dime packages. I know you can't talk about it, but you guys got a lot of dime packages. But anyways, the center is a real jerk right here. It goes the wrong way. Gets everybody killed. I'm glad we I distracted everybody from watching that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep, that's all we were doing there. Mm. Right here, Trey gets blown up a little bit. Oh, watch Wilder run uh, PJ over right here. Ooh. And obviously run through Telvin and Joiner. But boom, smacks him to the ground. Bam. I don't know if you if it's glitching up too much. No, you can see I, it. It was a lot smoother <laughs> when I, I put this clip together. Damn internet. I love well, the biggest like right here. We're so tired. Look at Bobby and, and uh, talking shit to Joiner down here. And then, uh, what is that? <laughs> Who is that leaning over right here? That's Demonte. That's Monte. That's Monte. And then I think he's talking shit. Like, looks like Bobby's talking shit to Joiner. Obviously, high school teammates. So they can probably mm -hmm. say whatever to each Lowndes other. County, baby. Yeah. Huh? Lowndes County. I was going to say, too, James Wilder, the biggest thing for him, there was. I mean, there was contact on him, but his strength is his legs, and he showed it there on that goal line. You just it yeah. couldn't. It was hard as hell to take him down. If you go back to the Clemson game, twenty twelve, yeah. that highlight run he had. I mean, 
I mean, he had that coming in from high school, though. He got the genetics from his dad. See this right here. This is I can imagine how how thankful right now, Josue. These guys in the back. Who's that? These guys in the back? Yeah, they're yeah. How how thankful are they right now? They're happy. That, I mean, unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, does KB well, not get in on that? Though, man. Like no, the wide receivers, nah. Hell no. Yeah, store for us, we were used to doing this. There's extra work too. You know, people forgot like after practice, we were the last ones off the field. Our coach had us out there all the time. So for us, like Jimbo was pushing it the extra mile here, but I mean, it was just like pushing the sled for us after practice. So those guys every can stay day. out there. We'll get the job done. Don't worry. <laughs> it's because every day was a, a, a huge Jedi mind trick. I feel like uh, <laughs> we just never knew what to expect. Like we knew what to expect, but it got to the point where we were expecting the unexpected. Like, yeah. Whether it was four quarters, like we would get going in the warm up, and then Jimbo would restart it, or it was a practice, we would get going in the warm up, restart, or get halfway through practice and restart, yeah. uh, or fourth quarter drill, get like a couple drills in, restart it, yeah. and uh, you knew eventually though, like coaches would be like, all right, like it, it's the off season, it's time to go home. So that was like the only hope I ever had in my heart that the shit was going to be over eventually. If it was the four quarter stuff, but yeah. during the season, it didn't make a shit. Those guys were there till twelve or one probably, so oh, yeah. they had all damn night. Mm-hmm. And uh, but eventually some of us had study hall, but a lot of it, those were seven thirty eight o'clock. And uh, so that wasn't bad. I'm not saying they were we were sitting here breaking NCAA rules. We weren't. But uh, the damn the, the, oh, the sleds host way bring back a lot of a lot of feelings. Hey, you're on the sled. <laughs> How long's up to you? <laughs> well, yeah, that is true. <laughs> we're going to go on that fucking sled. Yep. That is damn right. So this is a really good job by everybody. This, okay, so finally everybody's doing their job. You know, the center finally has his head out of his ass. Everybody's doing their job. This is really good stuff. I'm just going to draw this up. It's right here again. You got these guys reaching them. And our aim and point was what host way on outside zone? Outside shoulder. Outside breast to armpit, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> right? Outside breast to armpit. I'm trying to leave you a little color right here. And, again, we're trying to work for this backside backer. O'Leary's trying to clean, clean it up for this backer. And then we got the fullback trying to find Joiner. We're cutting off this backside B gap. Then CLS, C gap, second level, whatever shows. You see Casher, he's mailing him right now. So as soon as he steps either way, if it's a run fit and he knows he's not going on a pass, he'll fit that gap. So that's what that's a lot of these exchange looks you'll see. They got a gap if it ends up being a run. If it's pass, they're man on him. little tough on uh on trey jackson i think his you can see watch uh watch trey jackson's left leg this guy had a lot of knee trouble but man he was tough as hell too uh he ends up leaving that back uh second step behind so if you don't get that second step down quick i'll swear you know this like you have no chance of uh, of making your block it starts Mm -hmm. with the first step the second step has to come and make contact and that's when you get that propulsion upfield and that's when you get them moving uh you want to talk a little technical there but Mm -hmm. But it's tough on Trey when that, that back knee don't come through. Mm. Well, Sway, what are you doing on the ground, man? You taking a nap, nah, too? Good question. I think that was the theme of the day. <laughs> How's the ground feel? Is it nice grass? <laughs> Planking. Yeah. Something like that. Getting a workout in. <laughs> Finding work. <laughs> but how about Joyner, man? Just not Joyner, uh, freaking Wilder. Just getting busting his ass to get in the damn end zone. It's incredible. Uh, Can you back it up just a out? little bit? Yeah, I want to see that again. Is there a way to back it up or now? Is it? Yeah, I can back oh, it up. Is it just the physicality, man. Yeah, just watching Joyner and and Wilder go at it. it's pretty special. Yeah, incredible thing to watch. Just, Sign me up. Yeah. Yep. Like Telvin and that Telvin Joiner and going against Wilder is just crazy. I mean, Logan, you're at practice now, like with those guys. Mm-hmm. And like, you know, Jose, yeah. you know this too. You go to an NFL practice, you go to a college practice, and they're physical. You hear it. You hear the mm-hmm. pads popping. Like, That's what I'm saying. It. I'm like, you just get, I'm getting like the senses of it because, you know, the best things happen in practice, in my opinion. And when you can hear that pop, and then when yeah, you're you chirping a little bit too, it's just like, and, and you and you got the fall weather coming in, or like right here it's spring weather, so you get the warmth coming in Tallahassee. It just that that, that you're field starting to get me aroused. Good. You're getting I know, aroused. I know. I need to chill it out a little bit. We got like <laughs> ASMR going on here. <laughs> Keep this back to at least at least PG thirteen, maybe small oh. rated R. I don't know what this is. 
Oh, this is tough right here. Again, backside, uh, you know, it's the center and right guard. We end up letting Stample go, trying to work too quick to this backside backer who really is PJ. But you see Josue right here. Takes uh, J Did Jacoby try to Spider-Man you again? I think he did. You end up jacking me up too. Yeah. So at some point, we all screw each other over here, and that's 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 the brotherhood, right, Josue? At that's some right. point, we all have to pick up the slack for one another. And mm -hmm. uh, that, that that's what we took pride in, that's for sure. Because yeah. not every day Josue was having a great day. Not every day I was having a great day. Not every day Trey Jackson was having a great day. And mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times we had to pick each other up. Yep. It was uh, – Pushing impressions are absolute gold. Yeah, I should have a stand-up comedy show doing them all. Remember Jimbo would get up there and he'd start talking shit. <laughs> he'd, he'd pick his ass and he'd move his feet real quick. And, and then, oh, no. <laughs> then he'd hit his ass and pick his nose at the same time damn near. To take, the, take the flare pin and stick it in the air and, and then look at it. That was my favorite little nervous tick he had every time he made a joke. That was, uh, that was really good. And for you guys that know Coach Fisher, I love him to death. But I just had to bring that up. That was pretty good. That just skip uh, – I just skipped this, I think. Ooh, who had that tackle? Wait. Actually, bounce back to the, the – uh, there we go. But right here, we're getting blown up. I, I think the Jacoby ended up spiking inside. I think that that was the worst, too. And, like, when somehow they ended up – you would overstretch it a little bit when you're trying to reach him, and the dude would get – you would overstretch it so much you crossed over, and your guy that you're trying to reach is so far inside, and then everybody else would get jacked up. It's coming behind you. That was a tough look. I wish I could remember 48's name, man. Nile. That'd be my worst nightmare, having Nile Lord oh, Stample God. coming at me like that. Get me out. Get me out. Good <laughs> Lord. Look at this. It's like a truck. This is not even a truck. This is a freight truck. Mm. It's coming just tough. Wilder. Oh, is that that is Eddie, isn't it? Eddie did come back in. So, yeah, the defensive line was subbing a little bit. So Yeah, yeah saying, young Mario Edwards there, too, I think. Yeah, Mario Edwards has been a DN out here on the tight end the whole time. He was 15 at this point, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then, yeah, that, th those guys were in the whole time. But I, I know you see Derek Mitchell eventually, and then I think Jacoby. Jacoby might have just been getting back health-wise. So I think they kind of had a little rotation going because they were all fucked up in their shoulders, hips, groins, whatever, because we were all jacked up. Yeah. I mean, it's not easy playing in the trenches, but this is a tough way to get through because I'm trying to get through Christian out the backside backer. But O'Leary comes to clean him up. It's just we all just get – you know, Sway, you probably should have got a pregnancy test after that just to make sure you're all right after we all fell on top of you. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. A little fullback dive. We got some yards here. Mm -hmm. It's not bad. And, again, these are, it's all the same steps pretty much, but this is more of an inside zone track. O'Leary coming in to clean it up, but poor O'Leary gets the shit knocked down by Chad's knee. I don't know if y'all could see that. Look at my boy O'Leary. I wish he was on here right now. He's probably stuck in traffic, but that's our <laughs> guy O'Leary on the bottom of all that. All that mass. Mm. <laughs> that that's going to need a shower after practice. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, somebody's throwing a little Kelly's liking it. Yep. Mm. This, again, this is tough right here, this, this whole scheme, if you're going to hand it off to the fullback. Because, again, you got nobody. This guy. You try to cover the front side A gap, cover back side A gap, B gap, C gap. And then you bring this guy in to try to lead up in there as an extra hat to get him as well. And, if, you know, if this guy doesn't come in my face now, I can go ahead and collect him. But if he just stays back a little bit, I can work to the backside backer. Then we get this fullback dive and again. Getting this dude going opposite, that's the key because that, that will hold these backside dudes. Civil War football, baby. Look at Coach Trickett all nervous about it. You know what I love about Coach Trickett, though? <laughs> Look at him back here. He ain't got no fucking script in his hand, I don't think. I think he's just watching the damn game. He's just, <laughs> all right, well, we're running right, we're running left. Fuck, that's all it is. Just track your gap, man. But my favorite about Coach Trickett is he would always wear the same shirt every day. He had the same staff shirt, Florida State staff shirt, from like 07 or 06 when he first got there. And he wore that thing till it like was freaking yellow, just of sweat. Uh, it was awesome. And you know what his other favorite shirt was, Josue? Do you know mm. where I'm about to go with this? Which one? <laughs> yeah, exactly. The uh, Rodney Hudson Day shirt. <laughs> you remember that? When he had that shirt that one morning? This is a white shirt. And I guess in Mobile, Alabama, there was a Rodney Hudson Day. Like oh. it declared Rodney Hudson Day, got key to the city. Coach Trickett, obviously, like that—that's his—that's his favorite, probably of all time, because dude, 
he, he was undersized and he worked his ass off. Rodney's a really great football player. But it, it said Rodney Hudson Day. And he was just like <laughs> – it was literally yellow. It was covered in yellow, but it was white, and it had holes in it in the neck. And he's like, I love Rodney Hudson. He just kept saying, oh, I love Rodney Hudson. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, I just thought it was so funny how his shirt was just so just covered in crap. But he loved Rodney mm-hmm. Hudson that much that he wore that shirt. So that shows awesome. you if, if you had the old man's back and you did what you're supposed to, he would have your back. Well Congrats to Rodney. Retired. <laughs> yeah. Really nice. Sure gonna try not to itch his nuts, his nervous tick back there. I can see it. <laughs> I'm gonna point out a lot of things, guys. Poor O'Leary, man. He gets Christian Jones or Abram's knee right here. Watch O'Leary come through here. Right there, he gets the crap smacked mm. out of him. That's tough. Everybody just goes down. Oh my goodness! Uh-uh. Just and I, I think I was on one leg. Weren't you hurt uh, during this spring too? I think everybody was hurt. Everybody had something wrong with them. Like we lived in the training room, just because our, our our practices were so physical. Like it was inevitable. It happened, and you just you mm-hmm. had to be in the training room because if not. You couldn't survive. It's like yes. car crash every freaking day. Amen. Another outside zone lead hook play. Defense starting to get tired a little bit. Seems like. Look at Josue right here. Yeah, they're, one, they're getting tired. Two, Josue is getting that cut block on the backside. Look at that. <laughs> he might look like he's not doing shit on the ground, but guess what? We just scored. He cut his man off. He got that backside nose guard. Look at look at Jordan uh, Jordan Wilder. <laughs> Get off me! <laughs> Snapping his head around, and grabbing that face mask, fixing the helmet. We're back at it. Next play. Exactly. This is a this is tough too uh, for a backside guard. I'm gonna compliment Josue. Um, you know, Josue is a big guy. He's got long legs. He's got really big feet. If you're a center and you're a guard working together, and you got a guard coming to cover your backside a gap, at some point or another, he's gonna get so tight in his split, like the distance between his foot and your foot, he's gonna step on you. Josue hardly ever did that, and he was a very big man. And so he hardly stepped on my toes. I have really bad toes, so I, I appreciate that, Josue. So he always had to split just wide enough where he could get there on that backside. But you'll see right here, got a decent uh, split. It's it's almost – damn, that's almost 18 inches, the standard split. On goal line, you want to tighten him up a little bit. But he's he ends up getting into his aiming point is that shoulder, that in, or that play side shoulder. He gets in there, cut that off, and you get that, and you go, what, one, two, three? Get that outside thigh board, and you just drop, and it cuts them every time. So, how often, host, what do you think we practice cutting at, at uh, practice? Shoot, I mean, there were times where it was consistent, consistently, like we were doing it. Other times we didn't, but I mean, if we, I felt like we practiced that enough to where we were good at it. I mean, you remember uh, option screen reverse period? And oh, they used to oh yes, 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 yes. That so you used to be able to cut on screens all the time in the open field outside the tackle box. Uh, I don't know, Logan, if you were too young to remember that, or you know, I remember, <laughs> but uh, I'm just messing with you, yeah. Uh, anyways, but we would be able to go out there and cut, and that was awesome cutting on the perimeter. That's how we made the screen game go. Hell, the introductory uh video I made of us, I had Osway versus screen on Miami, that was the Sally play, and uh, you can get out there and just you know, drop people to their knees, but it's yeah. different now. You so as offensive line coach, it's tough because you want them to be able to cut like in pass protection and things like that and inside the box, but. Screens are not a thing, and now it's not even worth calling the screen half the time because you got big boys out in space. They yeah. can't throw at the legs of the DBs because even if you just threw the DBs, they would just jump out of the way. The it way, would be yeah. just enough room for whoever had that ball on the screen or tunnel screen, whatever, to get by and score a damn touchdown. So damn. I thought that was yeah. really good stuff. Plus, we, we showed the one with – you remember Rashad Green, uh, uh, one at Clemson? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, 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 was, that was the good one. Raven. Yeah, the Raven, you got that damn play started. Yeah. But we all just dive at people's legs and get out of the way, man. It was awesome. It was good, too. Set the tone. Let those guys know. You know, mm-hmm. you know the last time that uh, Jimbo called that play and they scored mm. uh, before that on that same play, it would have been uh, 08 versus Clemson uh, at Florida State. Oh, wow. Actually in the <laughs> same area in the red zone. So there's some tendencies there. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Both in the red zone. This is a really good job, O'Leary, coming through. Well, trying to. He ends up falling. But uh, Jordan coming to fit up Abram. Good job by Bobby hooking him up, taking his ass to the ground. I mean, this is a pretty clean picture for Wilder to get up in here. Great job, Osway, cutting on the backside. Man, I love it. This is exciting stuff. When do you guys know this was a special team? This – oh, God. I would say – 
What do you say, Josue? I'll let you. I'll let you take this question. Tough question, but I mean, you kind of know when you have three special quarterbacks in one team. You got you had Jacob Coker, you had Clint Trickett, you had Jameis, and there's a three-way battle of, on the quarterback going. And then you have a great offensive line, and you have a great defense. I mean, you don't know you're going to go undefeated, but you know you're going to compete every single day. So it's kind of it's kind of hard to say. But then you just go on a row, and then you don't listen to the noise. You just keep your head down, and next thing you know, you're United champs. At least that's how it went for me. I mean, so it's kind of hard to say we were special because then. It's like we're kind of listening to the noise, you know what I'm saying? So it was more like just work every day and whoop ass. <laughs> whoop ass. I think – I don't know if we ever thought like we knew a point where we were special. Obviously, you yeah. are considered special after you do something. Exactly. I knew we had the capability probably during the spring or if not like during – because I was, I was just coming off a of growing surgery, so I was on the side. I was doing the – I was uh, there with uh, Jerry Latimer, and I was helping him. Uh, I was working out too, but doing the side, all the injured guys, I was running those workouts. And uh, I remember just watching everybody that was going. And I was like, holy shit, like we got some dudes. And just, mm-hmm. just watching them while I'm working out. Obviously, it's, you can only do so much over there. And, um, and then I think during camp, when we beat the shit out, like we, we were beat the shit out of each other. And then we didn't have much, like, I felt like we had rest time, but not enough, right? Mm-hmm. It's never enough. Whatever. Who cares? It yeah. is what it is. But then we go kick the shit out of Pittsburgh. And, that's kind of when I had a funny feeling we had a chance because, mm-hmm. like, that D-line was no slap on, on that mm-hmm. D-line, right? Mm-hmm. Obviously, Aaron Donald. Uh, everybody was pretty good on that team offense, too. And we just kind of kept On going. the road? Uh, yeah, on the road uh, in the Heinz Field. That Starting was a, really a cool tr- play. freshman quarterback. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. It was uh, – so, I knew we had a chance there. And then, obviously, like Josue said, the quarterbacks, when, just watching – you know, obviously, Clinton left for West Virginia after that spring. And, uh, like, I get it. Like, he had, he had to go, and he, he did a great job for himself. Uh, mm-hmm. But it ended up being Coker and Jameis duking it out. And at one point or another, I really didn't know who – like, the day they were walking in to announce it, I I didn't have a guess. I really didn't because it was – I wouldn't say it was dead dick even, but it, sometimes it was, and uh, both were super talented. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I tweeted about Coker too because I want to make sure everybody knows how great of a teammate he was and how he professionally handled that situation, uh, not making it awkward, not being a cancer. And, uh, you know, that's why he's successful at what he does today uh, in, in the workforce. So, um, but, yeah, Jameis ended up, you know, winning the job. And, hell, we did good things. And, shit, you put Coker in the game, he did just fine too. And, hell, you put Sean McGuire in the game too. He was – Sean McGuire smart. He, he knew ball. So, uh, yeah. he could sling it around as well. And I don't know if you guys knew, like, that video I posted of O'Leary catching that touchdown pass. That was from Sean McGuire. That was his roommate. I think that was Sean's first touchdown, right, Josue? Uh, uh, first sure. touchdown throw or something like that. And uh, so I, I knew that was a special catch for Nick, so I wanted to throw that out there too. A lot of, a lot of weird backstories. But right here, another touchdown. This is a good job. Everybody just doing their job, moving people. Hmm. Or turning that down. He didn't want that. But – this is when we start to take over. This is where, like, screw it. Like, we, we got it. There's no chance. Like, we're going to beat y'all's ass, and we're going to kick y'all's ass right now. Here, here, fullback, lead up, joiner. It's the same shit. Work to this backside, back, however that plays out. You know, O'Leary come and lead. Go blow that up. Cut off that damn backside, man. I tell you what. Speaking of, big shout out. Speaking of, guys that are working for Jimbo right now, this is David Spurlock. And that's Clint Trickett right next to him, too. And that's Cobra. <laughs> Mm-hmm. David Spurlock is an incredible human being. He's the only guy, Hostway, you could probably agree with this. He's the only guy, no matter how bad of a day you're having, that guy can make you laugh. I promise. Yeah. He can make you laugh. He can, you'll be sitting there. I remember I'd be, <laughs> we'd be in the damn cold tub, hot tubs, and be like some, you know, pretty looking athlete girl walk in there, get in the hot tub. You try to be talking to her. Oh shit, here comes Spurlock. Spurlock always had a girlfriend. He was always wiped up. And <laughs> he comes in there. <laughs> And he would just embarrass your ass in front of her and just make you turn red, just look like an asshole. And uh, he just had a very special talent to make, you know, just, just get under your skin. That was Spurlock. And I think that's why he's such a good football coach, too. Plus, well, you're around him. So, and Spurlock knows ball, too. He yeah, obviously great teacher of the game, man. Extremely, right? Like, once he yeah. figures, once Spurlock figures something out, he's obsessed with it. Same thing with fishing and golf. Like, once he gets it, he's obsessed. So, yeah. that, that's the type of cat that Coach Trickett liked to recruit. You know, like Josue, like me, like Trey Jackson, like five. Once you get something down, you're obsessed with it and you don't stop. And obviously, Josue, 
you love football, and that's why you're still around it. And then you see mm-hmm. Osway, I mean, he looks like the freaking rock. So, uh, <laughs> room, right? Wait, let's see. Let's just get see. Uh, yeah, there's there's a there's a couple good resemblance. Right now, but you know you're, you're close to it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Look at Wait, that, host, wait. This is probably like a hard question to answer, but who like not maybe gave you the hardest time on the D line, but like aggravated you the most? I mean, there had to have been one that where you lined up in front of them. Like I'm just so tired of. Shoot. I would say probably Eddie Goldman, man. That guy was a was a was a hoss. Every practice, man, it was going to be full speed. And uh, the linebackers, too, man, guys like Telvin, you had to make like a backside cutoff block. And mm-hmm. he was just so fast, you could barely reach the guy or get to him. So, I mean, the whole defense, man, they, those guys, like, they just brought, like, this, they brought it out of you. Because your job, you had to get your job and they had to do their job. And guess what? I wasn't going to freaking get let down. They weren't going to let down either. So it was going to be a, a full clash every mm-hmm. practice. So it was like, if you had a bad day, you were going to get exposed. So. Ooh. When you stepped on that field, you put the helmet on, and you, you had to figure it out. So, gotcha. yeah, you couldn't have a bad day. So, uh, exactly. So, it was like, so much down on the field, man. It's like you mm-hmm. have all these animals out there. It's like, hell no. Nope. A bad yeah. day is probably getting your ass injured because <laughs> you're going to get a helmet to your knee. So, <laughs> you're like, if you don't go full speed, you're getting fucked up, and you're probably getting somebody else hurt too. You know, that's exactly. just the way it was, man. So, I mean, I think that's what brought up the, the, the greatest out of everybody on that team. Because, yeah, you know, if you're having a bad day, I'm gonna take advantage of it too. I want to look great. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm gonna expose your ass and talk shit, and this is yeah. the way it is. And then when we get in the locker room, I'm gonna talk more shit, <laughs> and that's just the way it was. But mm-hmm. at least for everybody else, but Hostway, I swear to God, I feel like the old line we never talked shit. We're like, all right, cool, we did our job, and we, we just yeah. took it to the house. It was never enough time to talk shit, man. You worried about the next play, at least, at least for me. I, mean, I was worried about the same meeting. Key getting motherfucked you know yeah exactly it was more about <laughs> executing than anything <laughs> i was trying to run home and watch the damn film before i went to bed just so i yeah. knew it was coming the next morning Absolutely. swear to god i mean it's funny though like didn't they give us ipads at one point in the last couple of years and they could actually track how much film you watched and at one point so campo the uh the film guy who's there for years he's at colorado now with uh, coach prime he uh he hooked me up with the laptop because I like the cowboy remote. I, I just I watched a lot of film. I hated the iPad. It pissed me off. And uh, he gave me a, a computer, and they're like, "Hey, why aren't you watching film?" And I was like, "Got a computer," and what the what the thing? And so I didn't. Get, I almost got in trouble for not watching enough film. But little they know, I was watching a lot of film, but with a mm-hmm. different system. Happened to me at New England too, when I just watch all the film at, at the uh, stadium and leave at you know nine o'clock at night, nine thirty. But uh, yeah, so. A lot of those guys, and I think some of our players didn't give a shit, started even when I've been a coach. They just pressed play and they let it run. I don't oh. know if you guys – hopefully you guys don't have to deal with that, Josue, where you're at with your guys. Hopefully not. Hopefully Red not. Josue, good job mauling his ass, keeping him on the ground. It's just easier just to take his ass to the ground and lay on top of him, right? Because if you get back yeah. up, you got to go do more shit. So, I'm, I don't know about you, but I'm a minimalist. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. Oh, I'm getting my ass whooped right here at uh, center. I'm trying to get through to Christian Jones here in the middle. Well, Larry does a good job of coming Who's around. That? That's good news. <laughs> oh, getting his feet taken out from underneath him. Holy shit. You know, I've host way. I just saw this. I've watched this thing three or four times this way, but I just now saw somebody I haven't thought about in a long time. Who that? Mario Pender. Mario Pender. He's yes. got deer hips. Remember, remember when Trick said that? He's got deer mm. hips. Nothing runs like a fucking deer, right? The, the, yeah. you know, John Deere. I thought that shit was hilarious. He was but, actually uh, with Mario... him at uh, his last school. Yep. I was just about to say that. Oh, up there at Glenville State. Yeah. West Virginia. You know Ron McMahon went up there to coach with him too? Yeah, yeah. He went up there, and uh, I remember sending the uh, the wedding invitations to his ass. He didn't have a mailbox. I had to send it to a, uh, the, the post office for him to get his mail. That's how small of a place it was. Oh, my goodness. Mm. Interesting fact, right? But mm-hmm. I always thought that was pretty funny. By the way, Josue, when's y'all spring game? Is it this uh, next weekend? Next weekend. Uh, I think that's the 22nd. Gotcha. Back well, to uh, Palace. Yeah, things looking good. Feeling oh, excited yeah. for the season ahead. Oh, looking pretty good right now. Obviously, can't release too much information. but Yeah. We're, yeah. we're looking good, man. Absolutely. Oh, so like the you, like, you work for the CIA or some shit now. You're just like, <laughs> well, I can say it's trying to pick off something. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? I don't even know you anymore. 
I'm thinking of the palace now. I'm thinking of like literally palace in Tallahassee. It's palace oh, saloon. Dude, I got so confused. Uh, by the way, I was going to say for the spring game, I don't yeah. remember Jake Stanley, Ryan McMahon, Garrett Faircloth, and I were uh, staying in Stanley's RV. And it's next to that parking lot at Checkers. So uh, the palace got brought up to me. I was like, oh, God. I was like, you want to screw it? Let's go play some darts and, and uh, hang out at the old palace. That was the old stomping ground. So that was, that was pretty. Uh, I wish you were there. I don't know if you remember the palace. Are you going to make it there? Are you going to make it there, Stork, on Saturday night? Think you'll make it back know. to Palace? There's no telling where. I, all I know is I want to make sure I go to Whataburger after 11 o'clock so I can get my damn taquitos and honey butter chicken biscuits. There's no Whataburgers around here up in Johnson City, Tennessee. Right? I miss it so bad. Do you have it there where you're at, Norman? Uh, yes, way? you got to go fully loaded. Fully loaded. Is it jalapenos, everything? Potatoes. Uh, bacon, sausage, egg, and cheese. Wow. That's incredible. Remember, you know my buddy Chad, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, Chad Bates, he played at Florida State back in the day. Yeah. His record, I think it was like eight or nine of them fully loaded. Uh, he, what? he used to be able to, to house them. Yeah, this guy's an animal. Uh, are these double cheeseburgers, or are they just one single? No, they're like little burritos. Oh. They're, they're, they're breakfast burritos, and they're unbelievable. Oh, okay. But then the honey butter chicken biscuits are good, too. Mm, those Maybe are gas, yeah. Blow your mind. So, anyways, I, all I care about is I want to come see the team, but I want to get some damn water burger, too. And, yeah, 100%. Uh, You'll be right meet, by it there. there. I want to meet the What about some wings from The Hobbit? Mm. Ooh, Hobbit hoagies. Oh. The sweet potato fries, oh my god, with the with the cinnamon brown sugar, oh my god, so good. You can take so down, I can take down 20, 30 wings, easy money. But bone in though, still... right? It's bone in, right? We're not doing boneless bullshit, right? Okay, <laughs> making sure. I hate. I literally can't stand it. I, I can't stand when they say boneless wings. It's chi- it's chicken, chicken nuggets, nuggets with sauce on them. Get it out of here. <laughs> you ain't no, wrong. Oh, we only got a couple more plays, boys. I know you guys are getting tired. Hosea, you're still at work, aren't you? Oh, yeah. We're rolling, man. I appreciate it. Up. But right here, speaking of at work, watch my boy Hosea. Mm. Right. Ooh. Let, let's watch your guy. Just it, It's tough when they get upfield on your ass, isn't it? Mm-hmm. I just want I want you guys to see this athleticism because I learned this trick from Randy Sanders. When you're watching a kid's film, highlight film, huddle film, whatever, how athletic is he? Well, okay, you might see him do some things on film and his technique, whatever, but how did, quick does he get off the ground? How quick does he roll off things? How quick does he snap up? That shows the athleticism. I think – I don't think that was a either Philip Fulmer or Johnny Majors things from Tennessee back in the day, but he, Randy told me that, and I was like, son of a bitch, that's the smartest thing I've ever heard. So, shout out to Coach Sanders, Sandman. Yes. But like, right here, you can see, like, Hosea, yeah, you get a little blown up here, but – this is a big man that's athletic that snaps right up. That's called the core strength, right? And then obviously the center. Now, so there's athleticism, right? Athletic guy about to get up. There's a guy that can't get up because he's not very athletic, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ooh, Look at that. Pick his legs and kick you off. What's going on? <laughs> oh man, this is bad shit right here. Wait now. So everybody, so I'll show you who just subbed in. Yeah. We got Derek Mitchell and we got Terrence Brooks. Mm. Gotcha. Hey, what's the old saying? See a little, see a lot, see a lot, see nothing. Yep. Right, Jose? Dude, yes, I'd live with that. That Dr. Elko guy. Mm. You know what I'm Take talking about? Yeah, smart guy. But uh, <laughs> good for that guy making making a living doing what he does, man. Sharing quotes like that. But right here, mm. the center sucked it off, and this is just a really good job by them, just blowing us up. Defense is pretty good. Good cut by oh, yeah. uh, Bobby on the backside right here. You cut him? Getting that done, yeah. And the nice. good thing is for this tight end, all you got to do is take Dan Hicks right over this dude. Throw it that's, right that's a freebie, man. Mm. Freebie knockdown. Oh, this is rough. So you're, you're, you're over here. you just seeing what the grass looks like. See how much it grew. Yeah, so it's practice. green and it smells really pretty and it's got some fertilizer in it. <laughs> Just over here <laughs> sniffing the ground. <laughs> oh man, I suck right I see here. You, I, need I see you trying up. to hook him there though. Yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to hook him up. I'm going too quick. I'm leaving Trey out to dry. Mm-hmm. I mean, the thing is with host way I could go a little quicker with Trey. I had to be a little slower. Mm-hmm. And then again, we gotta figure out who's getting this guy. Who's getting PJ coming through here so we can get O'Leary to come clean up this A gap to that guy, and then we get full back on Terrence right here. 
then we're all base blocking. Old school way, you get this and you combo that and you go on the inside zone track and you blow that up and you take this dude and kick him out or you motion the Z over, kick him out and have him fill in. There's a lot of different variations you can do here uh, that I've been a part of. And then, you know, obviously my football brain, but a lot of different things you can do. But this is pretty generic. I think we had three. I think there's two, there, for sure, two plays we haven't ran here. And it was the Otis and the Hammer that we used to run. But this is all like outside zone uh, lead stuff. Great job by Big Pad Chat. Look at that move in the pile. I don't think we score here. It was close, but we don't score here. This really good job by Josue. Like, you're just meeting him right in the middle. By the way, the guy – Josue has gone 20 plays, 21 plays, and this dude that's fresh hasn't gone one play jumps in here. So, Josue is going against a guy that's fresh. Mm, fresh and legs. He's at least keeping at the line of scrimmage. So, you know what? I salute you, sir. <laughs> hey, El Capitan. Yeah. Has he ever – Nobody mm. knows this is about Josue, but Josue knows how to drive a boat. We used to call him El Capitan. <laughs> That was <laughs> this when it's dark the on, you can't see the damn navigational beacon. But eventually, once you get close enough, you can see it. And you just got to nudge him over and, and just hit the wheel a little bit. And, and we'll go right around the, the curb. So that, that's a story for another time, El Capitan. That's <laughs> <laughs> he's keeping his mouth very quiet. I mean, you got to. You're at, you're at <laughs> college. You're... <laughs> I'm going to get my ass ripped after this. He's going to call me and say, what the f- <laughs> <What? laughs> oh, Can't do it, man. <laughs> hey, he's being, he's being good. Right here. Well, to bring that up during off the camera, off the camera stories be better. <laughs> I could talk. Well, that was the same. That was the same weekend we took the. Pro- Wait, okay. Somebody yeah. hooked this up. A very gracious person, not illegal, by the way, family related. Long story short, we were able to go on a private plane and fly down to Vero Beach and and hang out with some family and. uh they said, bring a friend with you. So we got me and Josue on this twin-engine King Air airplane. And King Airs are pretty badass. They're turbo, turbo props, so they're jet engines but with propellers. And uh, as soon as we get on the damn thing, it just kind of sinks down a little bit, and you can feel the wheels bouncing. But uh, <laughs> yep. some bitch, the thing got off the ground. We flew up. We were in Vero Beach in like hour and 30, hour and 45 minutes. Yeah. It was pretty sweet. And uh, we, get, we get to the tarmat, and uh, the person that helped us get there uh, had some beers for us. Uh, mm-hmm. Great family member. Love them to death. And uh, God bless them. But he had some beers ready to go for us. And uh, just – it was a very good memory, Hostway, especially right after the season. Was that yes. after 2012 or was that 2013? Uh, that was 2013. That was, that was 2013, wasn't it? Uh, no, it was After the Natty? Was much going on. I think it was the Chance Sports one. No, it was 2012. It was 2012, yep. Yep. It was yep. 2012. We flew down there. We had a little bit of a break right after the season was over. We just beat – or we got beat by Florida. And, uh, yeah, so we needed a little – Middle hiatus, so that's what we did when we got some sun down in Vero Beach. Great memories, I'll sweat. Yeah, sir. That's yeah, sure. Yeah. Don't worry, guys. It wasn't a legal booster. If anybody's even still watching, <laughs> <laughs> like right here, we're all getting stuck, man. There's a lot of buys on the floor. Yeah. But damn, yeah, Josue, you took Cam to the ground here. You see Cam? We go back. I think I was on my third rewind. Everything's set up for three rewinds. Here we go. That's a great. Oh, job. Cam just. Oh, this is the one where he just took him and moved him, didn't he? Yeah, he's still right here. driving people. Cam. The ball. Cam Irving coming off the ball, getting a second step down, just blowing Casher up. Casher, wherever you are, I hope you're doing good, man. But uh, mm. Cam got your ass on this play. Just Oof. driving him, driving him. He falls down yeah. a little bit, but falls down it's the finish though good it's yeah, good it, it's mm-hmm. the finish falls the walls and the, the problem is a lot host where i'm sure you dealt this too kids are scared to fail like if they feel yeah. like they're failing they just stop like the thing about us like we didn't have that choice like i wouldn't even have mm-hmm. thought why why do you even think about it you know oh god this is so bad so we're short here <laughs> so this, it's third and two right here so we're short and as you can see uh Dumbass center right here, not getting it done with Christian walked up and you got a tilt, not a tilted, but a backside shade at the uh, nose guard. Let me clear that out. There you go. That's why you keep it at the line, taking him down to the ground. Great mm-hmm. technique. I love it. But this is a tough one right here because it's third and two. We want to get the stand over. I think like we get the feeling, all right, if we score at this point, eventually he's going to let us go. And he gets short. And Do then it you again. See our boy right here. Coach Vic, yes. always yeah. cheering for the defense. He he hated offensive linemen. He did not like us because 
like we would do his program, but then we would go do our own stuff too. And you guys are going to overtrain, you're going to overtrain. And I think his whole job between him and Jimbo was like, Hey, if our guy, our guys get hurt. It's your ass kind of thing. So I think he wanted to get a workout in, but not kill us to the point where we're getting injured in the weight room. But we were always trying to do extra, right? Like that's just the way we were wired. Yeah. But there was a lot of tapering back throughout the years that we were there from 09 till I was there till 13. There was drastic changes. And then Josue, when you guys came in, that's when they started recruiting bigger dudes like you, Trey Jackson yeah. and Bobby. And that's when they started tapering down all the crazy shit we used to do. So thank you guys. Appreciate it. We still did the 26 one times. What was it? 30? Uh, was it 26? That was 30, no? Well, I know in 09 we did 31 with Coach Stroud. Yeah. But I think Vic was 26, right? And then eventually it worked its way down to 16. Yeah. Uh, right? I think it was. But it was like throughout the years it worked its way down. So mm-hmm. I'm not going to ask you what you guys do for reps. I know that's in, like, that's that's confidential. Uh, protect the house. Yeah, it's protect the house. <laughs> are you guys still Jordan speaking to protect the house? Are you guys Jordan still? Are you Jordan, guys Nike baby. or what? Airtime. Are Jordans comfortable? You got to say yes. I can't ask you that. Can I tried me? some Jordans and they're not comfortable, but I have gross feet. So. Okay. <laughs> we we have heard the things about your feet. It's not good. Bone on bone, yeah. I'm, you should start an OnlyFans. I'm sure some weirdo out there likes feet like mine. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's definitely out there. Someone yeah. is. You might I have a career. God, everybody's watching. How many viewers do we have right now, Logan? We've got us. Uh, we got. Uh, we got third. Twitter's rocking. There's a lot of people from Twitter right now. So shout out to our Twitter people. But we got a few on YouTube. Got a few coming in from Facebook. Facebook crowds probably in bed by now, though. Facebook usually yeah. goes to bed pretty. That's all pretty right. Early. We're on the second to last play, Josue. I know you got to get going. But good thing you're on Central. We're good. We're good. He's on Central. Don't give him an excuse. He's on yeah, Central. I get that hour. Mm-hmm. Get that hour. <laughs> this is a yeah. This is a really good. This is tough right here. So this center is an asshole. Christian Jones does such a good job right here. Just shooting that front side A gap. And I, I leave my second foot behind. So, you know, you get what you deserve. You get what you fucking deserve. Remember that? <laughs> or I fucking told you so. Yeah. <laughs> I told you so. Boy, but man, wasn't I don't think he was ever really wrong. The old man. The old man. The old man was never yeah. wrong. I, I, he's still not wrong. Uh-huh. Some of the things he, he said would happen are happening. Yeah. It's just, it's incredible. But he's right. Is that Somebody Cam right. holding on to Ka- – not holding, but putting a good block on Casher there. That was nice. Again, it was Casher. Casher was a, a young pup too, so he's getting baptized right now. <laughs> mm-hmm. He's, he's learning his baptized. lessons early. Uh, yeah, I think Cam grabs him. I used to love – speaking of baptization and all that, I used to love – because Baron with the St. Thomas Aquinas, so he's Catholic, and he used to sing uh, – he used to sing like the Holy Father up there, with like the priest or whoever it was, singing the communion. He used to do all that forever and ever. And <laughs> he would just get us going laughing. Baron's a really incredible human being, too. Let's talk about him for a second. One, he was 300-something pounds, 290, whatever, but could dance and like break dance. He was the most flexible, biggest human being I've ever seen, but like not super athletic looking, but he was athletic. And uh, he knew every song to every single or every word to every song. Uh, very in tune with like technology. He's just he's a special, special kid, man. Uh, yeah. Special dude. I really like playing with him and extremely dependable and understand. He understood football uh, at a very young age, just like Bobby, because they went to the same place, just like Lamarcus yeah. did, uh, just like Rashad Green. Did somebody post a thing up there? Yeah, we. I got a long one for you here, but yeah, I'm gonna read through it if you want to. It's to you guys. Appreciate you, Charles. Yeah, man. Uh, I think that's where, you know, just doing these podcasts and things, I really want to take it back to the 90s. And, uh, you know, once I run out of stuff there, guess what? I'm going to go to the freaking 80s. Uh, so it is a great era of football. And I know a few people from that era. And they were consistently in the polls every freaking week, man. And, you know, they, they sustained consistent good football for so long from that era. And I, I know it fell off in the mid-2000s. Hell, when I got there in 2009, it was kind of rough. But, uh you know, I think we're headed in the right direction. I think we got a really good head coach <clears throat> that's got a tendency to, one, stick around, not just pick up and leave for the next job. Um, and, and there's some there's some Bobby, Coach Bowden similarities there. And uh, so I hope he sticks around. It seems like a really good dude. And he's got the – this. I think he's got the place heading in the right direction. I can't wait to meet their staff when I go there for the uh, – for what you call it, the, the spring game. Yeah. Are you trying to get down there and see some of the – 
team and staff? Is there is that I, kind well, of plan? I, I mean, after a, your 10 beers? I, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not going to walk in there like that. Uh, I, I'm, a, I'm a little more classy now, Logan. I promise you. I'm, I'm a dad now. I got to oh. be smart. No, I'll, I'll, well, the thing is, like, I've lost a, I've lost about 20, 30 pounds. So, you know, mm. two beers or three beers, that, that's all it takes, man. So I got to hit different. Yeah, it hits different. You got to be really careful. Don't try to drink like 300 pounds again, man. Next thing you know, you'll be in a spot you've never been in before. So been there, done that. I'm good. But anyways, yeah, I want to go meet the staff, hang out and uh, get to know them a little bit and talk ball. I doubt they have time because they're going to have recruits in. Like the fact that they're I talked with uh, the DFO. Uh, is it Cupper or Cooper? I can't pronounce it right. But he was uh, Coop. he emailed Coop. me like within 10 minutes trying to I was trying to RSVP to be able to go down there on the field and for the spring game but he emailed me back real quick and i just thanked him for having open arms towards us um because i'm sure they get a lot of uh you know alumni coming in there trying to see stuff and it's like a freaking uh i bet you like it's a circus at some point at practice with so many people coming to check it out and uh, especially when you're getting good that's when everybody wants to come around so i think they do a really good job of handling that and it's funny because like the years we weren't good host way or okay not a lot of people came around to practice when we were good oh you look over there's a whole college game day staff standing there. there there's some reporter yeah like you see on tv your whole life and all of a sudden boom he's standing there watching you play yeah. um, so that, that they're gonna have to be able to manage those expectations manage people wanting to be around because once you get successful everybody wants a little piece of you trust me been there done that like everybody wants it so uh mm -hmm. again i just thank you to the dfo and, and just the whole florida state staff for uh having open arms and hope we get a chance to you know come by and hang out for a second and you yeah know, not i think you, you and that's recruiting mm -hmm. but, yeah, yeah, so you and Atkins will probably get along. Coach uh, Fertitta, too, also with the O-line. Like you said, Williams, Coop, uh, he does – he's there with that offensive line. Good group. And those guys coach very hard with the offensive line. It is pretty fun. I mean, that's where I go during practice for the most part is watch Atkins coach them. Either that or I watch Hagens. I watch him coach so his you know guys the voice, with Odell. Then. You know the voice impression oh, yeah. I just did. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I've yeah. seen a few freshmen do some up extra up downs. That's just how mm. it goes. You can learn your lesson quick. Oh God, Osway! Don't get me started with up downs. God. Oh man, <laughs> it, we used to do so many up downs that Jimbo had to stop us from doing up downs. Like he had to tell yeah. our trick, like stop, because people were having shoulders and elbows, and, and you know, <laughs> they added up. Next thing you knew you had like a thousand, or yeah. you know you had a missed assignment. That's fifty up downs. Oh, mm. you know you might have two more missed assignments. Oh shit! So that's 150 <laughs> up downs. Next thing you know, you walk out of there at seven o'clock, and you're like, "All right, I got practice at two or team meeting at two fifteen. How the hell am I going to get these up downs done in between now and then? I still got mm -hmm. class, I got study hall, I got lunch. I'm fucked. You know, like know it, was just, it almost got to the point where it was impossible to get them done. And same thing with step two. You took the wrong step, and you couldn't do shit. Like you had to. Do, okay, one bad step this way it was twenty five steps to the left. Right, yeah. what? Yeah, man. And the worst yeah. thing he'll be, and I want them done too. <laughs> So whoever it was had to report back to him. Hey. Uh, whenever – I remember when Losey was there. I'm going to give this story real quick. When Eric Losey was there, I ended up GA and former Southern Miss. Uh, but Losey was a GA, and it's, this is when the up-down started becoming a thing. It was 2010. Me and Faircloth had a shitload from spring. Uh, screw up. Who knows what? We were just screwing up. We were screw-ups together. That's why we're best friends still, I guess. But uh, Losey just said, yeah, go down there and do them yourself in the turf room. We're in the now arcade and all that crap is. <laughs> and uh so it was a green room we went in there we, we just started doing up downs and i was like hey he's not coming down here i was like let's just run around in circles there's a water fountain right there let's cover our shirts in water hang out a little bit and just you know kind of keep watch just kind of stand here if we hear the door open in the back just start hitting up downs <laughs> and sure enough we waited about 30 40 minutes later go up there all right we got him most looked at us like you're an idiot for coming up here for saying you got him done but all right see ya but he was trying to like give us the freedom to yeah go get the up downs done but i don't care like just they're they're getting insane but jimbo had went to eric and told him hey stop with the up downs because i think he knew coach wasn't gonna stop but he's like hey tell him to stop with the damn up downs so that that's a little backstory right there and then so, uh yeah the that goes in spurlock shoulders that's probably why they're so screwed up because they started as true freshmen <laughs> a lot of up downs there yeah Hey, Logan, come with me to the Spiratics tailgate. Look at that. It worked out perfectly. I'm coming. Oh, I'm, yeah. We're meeting up somewhere, so I don't know where that's going to be at. Either the RV. I mean, I kind of want to see the RV. I just want to see what's going on in there. I also need to bum off a beer 
or two. No, you're so. coming by. Oh, yeah, definitely come by uh, and check us out. But I think at some point we're going to go by there and, and help out Wilder with his youth uh, right. youth team and try to get some money raised. And, hell, if anybody yeah. wants me to sign something cool, I will. Uh, but, you know, at the same time, I'm still oh, yeah. be there and support him. If it goes towards his thing, great. If not, I'll stand there and I'll chill, cheer Wilder's team on. I don't care. Give me some pom-poms. But mm, just sure. here to help a brother out, you know. Yep, Chris will be there. Um, Coleman, too. All right. I think Coleman will be there. James Coleman. There's have you met dude. Coleman? I'm tagging a lot of people. Yeah. I'm sure Coleman there. Love Coleman. Always oh, meet so up. Wait, you don't Twitter much, do you? You're too busy coaching ball and, or coaching weightlifting and all that. Like, you don't have time for that shit. Uh, here and there. I missed that. I, I He's missed, peeking. You know, like, Hostway's peeking on the timeline. He's looking. Mm-hmm. I couldn't tag him on anything, though. You and. You and uh, Josue, Brian, y'all got that whole can't tag you. Y'all trying to get out of some stuff or something. Yeah. No, because we're in the league, man, freaking, you never know what kind of people the are Clutter, man. It's too much clutter out there. It's ridiculous. And you'll get, like, spam bots that look like porn stars and stuff. You're like, why are they freaking tagging me in this stuff? I don't, like, what the hell? I don't even know you. Or, like, are you, like, is, are you a robot? Are you real? Like, it's just bad. And so you just have to, like, yeah. that's why I said it that way. And I remember, Logan, you tried to tag me some things one day. And I took it off. For the announcement, yeah. I had to stop. Because people started tagging me and stuff, and I was just and it was stuff I had no idea what it was. Hell, my wife's account got hacked uh, now, so I had to take her what? Twitter handle off because it was some like Chinese uh, cartoon now, and it was selling like some kind of <laughs> what the I don't know. It was some bullshit on, from Dubai. Man. I don't know. Twitter's it's some crazy. weird stuff. Elon's Elon's. I don't. I just think he's just playing around with us. He's just toying with us at this point. So. Who oh, knows, man? He's, he's too worried. I, I, if I was him, I'd just be worried about finding space, man, exploring that stuff. Quit mm-hmm. messing with us down here. By the way, have you guys ever been in a Tesla? Yeah, I was in the one not too long ago down here. Did it have the fart noise on it? No. Don't. No. My, I've heard I worked that with the coach thing, last year, Jeff Love. I worked with a coach last year who had it in his car because for his kids to mess with them, and you can program which seat makes the sound. I think that's the coolest thing ever. Uh, so yeah, that's not want to see how reaction to that whole story. There. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying not to laugh. <laughs> we gotta get we, we, we gotta get Josue to these next two plays. <laughs> this is the last one right here. So what we're gonna do? Let's talk okay. some scheme instead of Tesla farts. As the Z wing bat comes across, our boy PJ again. He's man on him. He's gonna come back across here. So that's gonna take him out of there. So now we take this guy out of the picture. Now we got tight end for him. We got the tackle for him. Base blocking. We're scooping through on the backside to either the first backer that shows or, excuse me, I'm getting the shade. And I think Josue is going to pick up Christian because he's actually in this uh, backside A gap. So we're, we're canceled out here and we're cutting this off. And now we're just getting this fullback on Joiner right here. So that's how it basically you got a half or hat. And that's what it's all about half or hat. And then sometimes you don't always get for a half or hat, but you say, hey, running back, you're on scholarship, so why don't you make a miss? You know, or, mm-hmm. hey, you're on salary. So you see right here, you motion O'Leary over. That brings P.J. with him because it's zero coverage. We get all the backside cut off for the most part, and then the guys are popping back up. So O'Leary goes to clean up the, uh, you know, the front side A-gap. Chad tries to find, uh, I guess, anybody at this point, but freaking Wilder just runs his ass right in there, man. You see mm-hmm. him lower his pads. And run right through there. That's pretty special. I mean, Jameis got him something too on this one. Did he? Yep. Yeah, I think you're right. I remember this play. Again, I've been watching this over and over. This is a really good job by Bobby, really reaching it up, and a good job by Kevin getting it done. You see, uh, obviously, Jameis throwing it up in there, not giving a shit. Mm-hmm. Threw a shoulder in there. <laughs> Reckless abandon. And, and just, hell, Telvin almost gets folded up right there. But hell, just. Hats Colin off to Wilder comes, for this yeah. period, man. Hats, hats, really? I wish he was here on, on the show, but hats off to him for, like, never subbing out. We had other running backs, but he never subbed out. I love it. So, this is the overall scores right here. I don't know. Hmm. If, don't worry about uh, moving those uh, things, Logan. You're fine. Okay. Uh, yeah, here you go. So, play for play, if you look up here, up top – you got the play for play, and that's just, hey, does the O and D win? So what I mean by that, you literally take each play and make that a competition. Out of the 23 plays, offense won nine. Out of defense, out of the 23 plays, they won 14. That was just either on that play, did they stop us or did we score? So really, the disadvantage is on us, right? If they just stop us, they're good. 
if we if we don't score, we lose. So it is what it is. But if you go to the real world, right here, you go to the drives. So I got all the drives listed here. This is my fat handwriting. Once you become a football coach, you write in all caps. It's easy. It's clean. And uh, you, you turn in OCD about little stupid stuff. Josue, I bet you have different colored pins, don't you? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. <laughs> so defense, defense, defense on the first three drives. Again, those bottom, the, the bottom right of the screen, those were the down and distances. And then you see the offense taking over fourth, fifth, all the way through to the 10th drive, 11th and 12th. And that very last play we just watched was a fourth and two. That was got to have it. GTH, I got to have the situation. And uh, Damn. yeah, that is the podcast right there. That is the goal line grinder meat marathon, yeah. whatever you want to call it. All I know is my body felt like a shit sandwich at the very end of this. I think I still feel it like right here and right here. Mm-hmm. I, got, I still got to do the neck machine to get all those kinks out. This way. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you just feel like crap afterwards, and then you're back at it next day. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, again, I don't remember what day that was. I have no idea. Um, I don't know if it was a Saturday, like Josue said, or so you think that was at the end of a scrimmage? I think it was, man. I think it was, I don't know. I yeah. forgot. Honestly. I guess so, because it said play 133. That's a scrimmage. That makes sense yeah. now. It was a scrimmage, though. I think it was a Saturday. And they man. have certain sections of it. You're right. And that, that was the very last thing. And y'all are and dope. I think this, so. We were in Doak, and that, it was supposed to be four plays. Situation of football. <laughs> what, what's your theory? What's your theory, Oswald? Well, do you think it was predetermined? Like, th- this was going to happen regardless of the day? Listen, he was just going to find something? I've been thinking about it. Now my 30-year-old self thinking now, uh, now that I'm in the coaching business, I mean, you got time to just do something like that in spring to just yeah. see what your team's made out of. And yeah. Yep. No, in Jimbo, we want to be tough, but we don't want to just be talking about it. So that was the day when we just, hey, you know what? You guys want to talk that tough? Let's do it then. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And nobody tapped out. We all got, we all stood in there. We competed the whole time. So, I mean, it shows signs that we were a great team. At least tapped out. This is 30 years now looking back. That was, damn. That's insane. I was like, what people, a lot of people don't know about you, like where you come from, how you got to where you've been. Like, uh, I won't get into it, but Hostway's story is amazing. I just, I bet you thought at that moment, like, how the hell did I get here in this hell hole right now? But hell, Hostway, you've always been grateful about everything, man. You're always just yeah. locked in the moment. And that's why I love you so much. And that's how I wanted you on here and just uh, mm-hmm. been through hell with you and back, man. Uh, you were the part of the younger crew, the 2011 class that came in. Obviously, 2010 was a really good class, but 2011 came in and you guys put us over the edge once you guys <laughs> developed. And, uh, it was an honor to play with you guys. So uh, definitely an honor to have you on, on the show too. And I, I appreciate you taking the time out of your day and you probably not to get home till later. And you probably got to wake up early as shit and get back in the weight room and polish some fucking weights or some shit. And uh, <laughs> you know, like I, it's not easy the life you guys live as strength coaches. And I think a lot of people need to know that. And you, you know, you guys are on the backbone of the team. You guys are, you see the players more than the coaches and you're yeah. putting in, you know, you're instilling discipline in them daily habits and you're trying to get them right. And, uh, you're having a big effect on those guys. So you are a true warrior as your addicts media says. So yeah. mm-hmm. you're going to make me tear up, man. So that being said, I love you dog. And I'm out. All right, man. <laughs> <laughs> you like, I, was like, Give me I appreciate you, man. <laughs> yep. <on> social media. <laughs> no, <laughs> Absolutely. It's, it's an honor being on your show, man. This is awesome. What you're doing. Just giving the fans an insight and a perspective on how we did things. And I think you just keep this rolling. This is awesome. I appreciate stuff. it, man. I'm not going to yeah. stop. As long as my wife lets me do it, I'm going to keep rolling. <laughs> yeah, that's what matters in the end. <laughs> yep. But appreciate you, Josue, hopping on here with us. This was phenomenal. Yeah. Two hours of great content. You're not going to find this anywhere else. You're just not going to. So some two great guys giving us some inside back at what was a phenomenal, one of the best runs in college football back in 2013. But I got to see the start of it back in spring and that was super fun to go through just 23 plays of it. So yeah. Brian's going to show us one thing here. <laughs> oh, there we go. There's the boys. There's the boys. Those are for me right here. That beard looks a little bit different though. Brian looks a little bit different. Yeah. My wife uh, thinks I'm more attractive without it. So I've there you go. <laughs> right here, man. I appreciate this pick. It hangs up everywhere I go. I love it, man. I love it. Freaking awesome.
That's freaking awesome. But yeah, appreciate everybody hopping on here with us this evening. Make sure if you're on YouTube right now or Facebook, hit the like button, share with all of your friends. This was episode three of Calculated Chaos with Brian Stork. Enjoy the spring game. If you see Brian, make sure you go say hey to him. He'll be there with all of his friends going to show up at a few tailgates. So make sure you say hi to him. Josue, have a great offseason. Good luck with the all spring game coming up and hope everybody stays healthy. Uh, and it's ruined for you big time. It's awesome to see what you're doing. And I think the future for you is, is incredible. So appreciate you a ton for hopping Thank on here with, for two hours too. So yeah, yeah, yeah guys, Thank you, everybody man. enjoy the, yeah, enjoy the rest of y'all's week. And we will see y'all in Tallahassee on Saturday for Florida state's spring Seminole showcase. Looking forward to full coverage all across and all game day. Make sure you're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. We got all the coverage coming to you guys. And we'll be live on Wednesday night. Hear the spear previewing that spring game. Everybody have a great rest of y'all's week. Peace.